Hello everybody and welcome to the United Stand. This is the Manchester United visit to Sheffield United watch along. The easy win, I've called it. And look, I've called it. Uh, and I don't think that's about jinxing it. I don't think that's about being uh, overconfident. I think you know what it's about? It's about Manchester United should go and win this game. That's what it's about. No questions asked. None expected in return. This should be a very, very straightforward win for Manchester United today. And that's what I'm expecting. I'm expecting the win. I'm expecting the performance. Um, and I, I think we've got every right to expect that. So, uh, look, hope you're all doing very well. That's not the team. People get very excited about the team. That's not the team. Um, I'd like it to be the team, but it's not the team. Um, that was my predicted team. Obviously, I've changed it slightly because of Cavani uh, will not be starting in this game, as we know. Um, so I've moved Martial up front. I've put uh, Van der Beek to the right and Rashford back on the left. Rashford needs a rest, so there's uh, Gideon MJ. Um, yeah, can I just ask... Um, very, very quickly, if we've got any members in the live comments, we're launching something at the weekend, which is these audio GIF emojis, which will be, you'll get them for free if you're a member. You can actually get them at the moment if you're a member. Um, if you go to, if you click the join button below and you're a member, you should see a link to Emojam there. Um, if, you, if, if, if someone's got the time to go to the Emojam thing, download it, download the... Um, the six um, emoji gifts we've got, and then go to the community tab and post it in there. Just to, it's a long, actually forget it. It's too much on a match night, but uh, we'll talk about it tomorrow. Um, Pogba leaving in the summer, it's just Fabrizio Romano. Yeah, I saw that. I, I did see that um, Pogba in the summer. Um, let's note, take a note of that for to talk about that with Flex actually. Um, yeah, I, I think some people may be hoping that he would go in January, but uh, yeah, he will be going there. Uh, welcome to the Members Club, Tyrone B. Thank you very much for joining. Welcome to the United Stand Members Club. You get a little badge next to your name. And uh, um, also, Santa Bridge. Get Santa Bridge going. Would you be annoyed if Jesse starts? This is you in black. And welcome to the Members Club, Lionel Robinson. Thank you very much for joining. You can do that by clicking the Join button. As I say, we've got some extras for the members coming up with these... They're, they're going to be, what they basically are going to be is audio um, GIFs that you can send on WhatsApp and everything like that. And some of them are quite good, but uh, we're launching them this weekend, but you can get access to them now. That's why I wanted some of the members to check them out. Uh, Phil Jones deserves a start, says Andreas Witsi. I hope everyone's feeling good. You know what? It's really weird. I'll, I'll tell you a little bit of a story. Mark prediction for tonight and I'm looking forward to it, says Sam. Um, I've gone with a 3-0 win for Manchester United. Now, I am... Um, I, um, I um I've just finished doing a, a preview for Leeds um with um with the Leeds football channel and it, I said on it's really interesting it's really weird actually because I'm really looking forward to the Leeds game and it feels like we should be looking forward to the weekend game yet we haven't played our midweek game yet that's what we're going to be playing tonight so um I am looking forward to the Leeds game but then we're playing tonight so it's um it is interesting in that sense and I wonder if it'll be a bit of a a bit of a, um, a disadvantage to us against Leeds, who are going to play high energy, and 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 therefore should Ole Gunnar Solskjaer be looking at some resting some players for this game tonight? We we, we will see, we will see we will see. Um, Mark, if Oli starts Scotty over Donny, it's kind of annoying, don't you think he needs to grow up? Says Hazib. You know what I'm going to do when the team news comes out tonight? I'm going to really try my level best not to start moaning about the team news because. I think he could pit Jesse Lingard, Wan Mata and Dan James at centre-back today and play them as a back three and will still win the game. He cannot lose today. I will be frustrated if he picks McTominay and Fred um, because we don't need two centre-defensive midfielders in this game. But we'll still win. It's not about... It's a bit of a different team selection dilemma tonight. It's not about, oh, we're going to lose because he's picked that team. It's more about, well, we'll still win, but, it's not, but we could have won by more. We could have... We could have put more of a we, we could have put a marker down for our future, and maybe he is going to put his marker down for the future by saying I'm going to play two defensive CDMs every bloody game now. So that's why it would be frustrating. Um, but I think I, I fully expect him to do it. To be honest with you, um, thank you for the super chats that are coming in. You can do that through the dollar sign. Kenneth Hoagland says ESPN released an article earlier talking about the pros and cons of a Ronaldo and Pogba swap deal. It's a very nice idea, but I not do not see it happening. Kenneth, I don't see it happening at all. Um, I haven't jinxed it. Like um, People need to um, understand here that a uh, football fan predicts easy win for United. It's not a jinx. You know, it's not a jinx. It's an opinion. And if we don't win, you could say, wow, that's Goldbridge's fault because he was popular. It's got nothing to do with me. 
Um, he won't pick the team I want to pick. He won't play the way I want us to play. If we don't win, it's on the players and Ali Gunnar Solskjaer. It's not on you, it's not on me, it's not on anybody else. Um, any leaked team news, says Tom Weaver. I haven't really seen any leaked team news tonight. Uh, I've not been uh, not been informed of any and I've not seen any. Um, I, I personally think that... Um, I think that it will be... I do think it will be Lindelof and Maguire and I do think it will be McTominay and Fred. I think he might go quite close to the team that he picked on um, on, sun, on Saturday against uh, Manchester City. Obviously, the game is on Amazon Prime tonight, so uh, fasten your seatbelts for that. It is good, but um, I saw, I did see last night, a lot of people had uh, problems with it being quite temperamental, so we will see how that goes with that. Um... I heard Henderson's playing, says Fayyad. I think I think Dean Henderson will definitely start tonight. Obviously, I've got him in my team on the left, and I really do think he will start tonight. Uh, one CDM, only McTominay for sure, and creative players ahead of him, says Shane. I think you've always got to pick Pereira. Not Pereira. What am I talking about? I think you've always got to tick, you've you've always got to pick Fred. Yeah, you've got you've got to pick Fred, haven't you? Um, audio cut off for for a second, says Shiam. Yes, it did. I did it on purpose, Shiam. I was talking to somebody as they walked past and uh, didn't want you lot to hear. To hear. Um, so, yeah, that's why that happened. We want the Martial shirt, Mark, says Doobie Guy. Who knows what's under here? Who knows how many layers are under this zip top? Who knows? It's the exciting thing about tonight. It could be Martial. It could be Rashford. It could be Greenwood. It could be Bruno. It could be a new one. Who knows what's under here? What I can say... Let me just check. Yeah. What I can say is if I do pull it down, you won't be seeing moobs. You'll be seeing a T-shirt or something like that. So we will see what's going on underneath there. Hopefully later on. McTominay or Matic have to play, in my opinion. Fred maybe too, says Robert McCormack. Bollock. I'm sorry, Robert. I'm not, I'm not going to disrespect. It's all about an opinion, isn't it? I, I would say in response, why do you need to play two centre defence midfielders against a crap side that's got one point from 30? You don't need to do that. We don't need to do that. So I disagree with that. But the other side is there from Robert McCormack, um, who offers up opinions that don't always agree with mine, but doesn't mean he's wrong. Merry Christmas, bro, says uh, Nihal Rao. Mata should start. I feel his skills will help break a low block. Sheffield are not fast. Wouldn't be surprised if he did start tonight. I actually would not be surprised if Juan Mata started tonight. Uh, wouldn't be surprised at all. Um, I'd, be, I'd actually be surprised if um if van der Beek starts yeah i don't think van der Beek's going to start tonight um just do not think he will start unless he rests bruno which there you go uh yeah merry christmas to you all i mean some of you will be sort of breaking up for school and work soon as well so yeah merry christmas everybody um the emojis are uh, no emojis available, Mark, says David Lee. OK, I need to look into that. We can't send him emojis on the live chat. No, Hasano, you can't send them on the live chat. Can you try and reply to the community tab with one? That's what I want to test. So if you are a member like Hasano and you have downloaded the emojis, go to the community tab. I mean, there's nothing new at the moment, but just reply to it. In fact, I'll put what I'll do is I'll put something on there. Um, speaking of United's need at right back, United could have done with a 25-year-old Seamus Coleman type player. Didn't get to say earlier. Thoughts, Mark, says Connor Linett. Mate, I, I, I remember United being linked to um, uh, Seamus Coleman and I always quite liked him. So, um, yeah, I, I um, he's too old now, but, um, yeah, it's... Um, He would have been good. He would have been good. Uh, let me just come back. I've put a little post there for the members who've got the Emojams to try them out if you want to do that. That'd be great. I can check that back later then. So, yes, we're about 20 minutes out from the team news. And, um, there's, you know, we've covered a lot of what I wanted to talk about about Sheffield United in the preview, of course. Uh, happy holidays, Mark, and bring back Manscaped, says Atari Vanagas. I think Manscaped might be back at some point in the new year. Um, you only need to shave it every few weeks. Um, God, you wouldn't want to be somebody who's growing massively from there. Bye-bye, uh, rewipes. Don't know why you'd bother doing that, because you just get blocked. Thank you very much, though. And Sonny Fowler says, Chris Wilder Masterclass incoming. You know what? 
People say I'm disrespectful to Sheffield United. I don't feel that I'm disrespectful to Sheffield United. I, I, I think they're a good. I think they're a good team, but I don't think that Manchester United. It's not arrogant to expect us to win. Why should we respect Sheffield United? Why should we be scared of uh, Sheffield United? On a serious note, they've got one point this season. One point. We're into double figures for games played and they've got one point. They've scored five goals. They're not playing very well. They're vulnerable. They're unconfident. They are absolutely there to be beaten. And I don't care about being respectful to Sheffield United in the sense that Manchester United should go and win this game. There are no excuses. Um, I'm not acting like they're a League Two team road to dawn. I think, you know, I just I just think we've got... If you, wanted, if you want to finish top four, some people think we're in a title race, you've got to go and win this game. Of course you have. That's just the that's just the way it is. You've got to go and win this game, um, and and that's what I'm expecting. I wouldn't mind giving Martial a go at the penalty if we get one, just to get his goal scoring tally rekindled. Says Kanishka. Surely Martial will start tonight, and surely Martial will start down the middle. I you know I, I don't see any diamonds. I don't see any back fives. I think ultimately it has to be a has to be a. Um, a 4-2-3-1, because we know that that is the, the formation that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer likes the most. So I, I do think that we'll see that. Um, a few people talking about Reek, Reek, uh, Reek Leak teams. Do you think, do you think, Nick, oh, Pepsi cans 4K, just go, go. You're sad, so sad. Our striker's about to get a three-match ban for um you know for, for being accused of make of a of a racial term and we've got people making super chats trying to combine two words to make me say a, a racist word that's how sad the world we live in you know Lo so loads of people have died loads of people businesses are in trouble everybody's pissed off and fed up but we get a prat in the live comments trying to combine two words to make me say a racist word that's the sort of twat we have living on our planet at the moment. This is why I wonder and fear about the human race. Absolute idiot. Idiot. No, he'll get more than banned, mate, because um, he's done a super chat. So the, the great thing about what he's done there is he's done a super chat. So he's given his payment details away. So that will be reported to YouTube as a racial term. And hopefully we'll be able to find out who it is and we'll take it as far as it needs to go because, you know, that's the thing about these people. They think they're doing it anonymously, but he's an absolute idiot because he's actually paid for a super chat to make try and, you know, for a racist term. So well done, mate. You've, you, you might find yourself in a bit of bother now. Come on, United. Merry Christmas from New York. Score prediction marks as Greg Basham. 3-0. 3-0. Manchester United. I'm going 3-0. Um, early goal. Sheff Sheffield United have to come out a little bit. We go from there. Um, uh, also got another super chat from Eric McGuinness. What's your predicted lineup for the Showtime Reds? Um, my predicted lineup. Sorry, I'm still on the I'm st on Zoom Bridge here. That's my predicted lineup. No, 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 that's not my predicted lineup. That's the lineup I would go with. Um, what do I think he will go with? Well, let me change it because there's no point in me staying with. You know, he's not going to pick this team, is he? If he, you know, if he picks this team, remember it. But he won't pick this team. So Luke Shaw won't play. Harry Maguire will move across to here, of course, and we'll have Victor Lindelof as if by magic there. Um, I don't think Donny Van der Beek will play either. So let me drop him. Um, I think he will definitely. Uh, I think what what will happen is Marcus Rashford will come across here. And we'll see Paul Pogba. You know, Ollie's bending over for Pogba at the moment, isn't he? Play where you like, Paul. And then uh, Scott McTominay will play there. So that's what that's how I think we'll line up. McTominay and Fred, Rashford to the right, Pogba to the left, and then obviously Maguire and Lindelof. Um, not resting players that need to be rested, really. Could rest Van uh, Bruno tonight. Do you think Twan Sebi will start tonight, Mark? Says Stephen Campbell, 89. I think he needs a runner games beside Maguire for us to just see how good he is. But Ollie won't do it, which is why I'm reluctantly Ollie out. Um, no, I, I, I agree. I don't think he will pick him either. Um, and also, Daniel Luciano, second time, Mark. It's a great day, snowy day, so no teaching today. So I can watch you and watch United go for it and go get the win and then some, says Daniel Luciano. Where do you live, Daniel? Got snow. We're, we're jealous. Where do you live? Um, why are you so in denial that we are in a title race, says Mr. Um, because we haven't been in a title race for years, mate. And I don't think that that centre-back pairing 
could win a title. You know, I can't be a hypocrite. I don't think we've got a chance in hell of winning the title. I would love it. I would absolutely love it. But I'm going to be realistic. We would be unstoppable with Gabriel Varon from Palmeiras, says United. Okay. Uh, come on, United, says Pregish. And I think we'll save James for Leeds to have a look, says Glenn Oakley. Welcome to the members club, Dara Costello. Dara, Co Dara Costello, thank you very much. And uh, good afternoon, Mark. Hope you're doing well, says Existence. Uh, good evening, where I am, but good afternoon, where you are. Mark, thank you for your consistent content. I'm hoping for a title challenge this year. Stranger things have happened. Nihal, I just want us to stay in the race as long as possible. And that's why winning tonight and beating Leeds at the weekend will keep us in that race. And also, it's not always just about a title race as well. We didn't have a very good transfer window. And others did. Chelsea had a better transfer. When that transfer window closed, a lot of people said that we won't get top four. So, um, you know, I think that, you know, you can't under... It's snowing here in America, mate. Come over, says Oliver Hamo. You, America gets so much better things than us. Who do you think will come and go this January, says Leith. Um... And hey, Mark, love the content. If Ollie loses to Sheffield tonight, is it time he's gone or not? Says just Foxy one four. I don't think I don't think he would lose. I don't think he, I don't think he would go. Um, to be honest with you, I muted it on purpose. People keep saying mute it. I do sometimes mute it to talk to people off camera. So I know I know I know what I'm doing. All the best, Mark. Hope you're okay today, mate. Was in Manchester on Monday for work, and it was nice to see Old Trafford. Have a good Christmas, says Simon TV. And hey, Mark, who would do better in front three position, Van der Beek or Pogba? I have snow too. North USA says Akash. Oh, you're all jammy getting snow. You know what we get at Christmas? We shouldn't have white scenes at Christmas. I we have bloody rain. Not not literally red rain, but we have rain. That's all we have in this country. Muddy rain. I went for a walk this morning with the wife and it was just like muddy absolutely everywhere. I'm waiting for your reaction to McFred starting tonight, says Patrick Cahill. Well, you've got 14 minutes for that. Um, can I just say this? Um, Klopp won coach of the year, says Wrestle India. Well, he deserves it. Uh, hey, Mark Henderson starting. Do you think Van der Beek starts, says Victor Liang? No. And evening, Mark. Wish the lads a bit of good luck with a rendition of the smash hit Cup of Tea and Biscuits, says Joshua Bowater. If you know, you know. You need to watch Going for Goldbridge that went up at lunchtime if you want to know what that's all about. But um, can I just bring a bit of uh, topical news as well? Um, the, uh, the If you're not in the UK and you're enjoying your snow, good evening, Mark. Hope you're well. Predictions for the game, says Oscar Davis. Easy win for United 3-0. Um, I just want to say this, that um, Manchester United are playing tonight. Uh, it's confirmed that Dean Henderson is starting tonight, by the way. Um, we haven't got any other news. Um, and he'll have an easy game tonight. He'll get a clean sheet. What an easy game for Dean Henderson to play. Um, what I was going to say is that um, we've got all these tears in the UK. Not crying tears, although it does make you cry. So different areas of the country have been in different tiers. London were in tier two. And if you're in tier two, you can have up to 2,000 fans in your ground, which is why last week Fulham had fans in the ground and Arsenal. They're now back up to tier three. Um but when, when they reviewed it and London went back up to Tier 3, there was a really big expectation that some other areas of England would come down to Tier 2 because the infection rate of COVID has come down massively where I live in the Midlands, um, in like uh, other areas, and especially in Manchester. So there was a, there was a hope that Manchester was going to... I mean, Gary Neville's got a hotel. I think he was hoping that it was all going to open up properly as well. Well, the sad news is that they, they've kept everybody in Tier 3 apart from Bristol, who don't even have a Premier League football team. And I know it's nothing to do with football, by the way. I was just being, you know, sarcastic, I suppose. But um, So, yeah, most of England and, and certainly Manchester, no fans in the ground um, and no pubs and restaurants opening over Christmas. It, it's amazing. But... Um, yeah, so no fans in the ground for the Leeds game, which is disappointing. We have to win our game in hand with Burnley to stay in the race, Mark. I'm hoping uh, to see us run a riot against Sheffield United, says Enzo. Five Premier League games to the 1st of January. Sheffield, Leeds, Leicester, Wolves and Villa. What would you predict as a point total there? And which games would you rest players? Well, we've got Everton next week, Via. So I think Everton next week, we've got to rest players in that one. I would rest players tonight because I think Leeds, Leicester, Wolves and Villa are a lot harder than Sheffield United. Um, I'm feeling confident tonight, says Sale Red. You mentioned potentially resting Bruno. Would we, would we not be better off doing this in the Carabao Cup against Everton? Yeah, probably. Probably. You're, you, you raise a good point. Um, 
How are you doing? Really love your content, says So I'm doing well. We can show our capacity to score today and make the Prem fear us, says Greg Basham. And do you think if we play Bruno as a false nine, we can put Fred, Pog, Bevan der Beek in the same team? That will help us break the low Brock and good defence, says Sahil. I mean, do you think Solskjaer's that good a coach to be able to do that? I'm not, I'm not saying he isn't, but um, th th there is an element of coaching required there to be able to play a false nine. That, you know, I think United have tried a lot of things, haven't they? Um, so it's snowing in Utah, says Fahad. There you go. It's snowing in Utah. Um, please subscribe if you're new, by the way, because we are very, very close to hitting uh, 924,000. In fact, it'd be nice to hit 925,000 tonight, wouldn't it? Welcome to the member. Uh, sorry, thanks for the super chat, Shane McAnary. And um, Dean Henderson starts for United, says Julian. Yeah, that's uh, that's all over social media at the moment that he will start. So I would pretty much expect that he would, which I predicted in the preview yesterday. Um, so, yeah, um, I would predict that um, I predicted that was going to happen. And I'm not surprised by it. It makes sense to play him against Sheffield United. One, because he's played against them recently, played for them recently. So he will know a lot about how they play. And also, it's not going to be a very challenging game. To be honest with you, if I was Dean Henderson, I don't know whether I'd be happy about playing this game. I think hopefully he's going to have quite a boring game where he gets a clean sheet with not a lot to do. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh, what are your score predictions, by the way? It's a funny game, this one. You, it's, to me, I think that tonight is a game where you can only um, have a bad thing happen, really. It's a game where, you've got, where, where we're totally expected to win. Hi, Mark. Merry Christmas. Who would you bring back from the past of Henningberg or Ronnie Onsen playing along Maguire? Love from Norway, says Nicola. To be honest with you, Henningberg and Ronnie Jonsson are not that different to Victor Lindelof. Better, probably better centre-backs, but they weren't blessed with loads and loads of pace. Uh, you'd still have... You know, the centre-back we need at Manchester United is has to be quick. Sanderberg could be a good CDM, but we missed out, says Angus Walker. And Fergie would turn his teams out to better opponents, but on rare occasions he would adjust the team, depending on our form and the quality of the opposition. Ollie does not have Sir Alex Ferguson's management DNA, says Marcus Mikado. And Mark, what's the possibility of Henderson going out on loan? And do you know how well James Garner has been doing at Watford, says Arturo Venegas. Um... James Garner, sorry, James Garner has been doing okay at Watford. He's started some games. He's been on the bench for others. Um, that's not too bad, is it? You know, this is a young player that we think highly of, and he's playing Championship football, and he's starting some games in the Championship. So, I, you know, I, I, I think that that's that's good development, considering that we've had players um, who've, who've gone on loan and not got any time. So, yeah, I, I think that's not too bad for him. Let's see how he does in the second half of the season. Always got a stretch. Stretching is very important. Stretching for the good. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Um, it's snowing in Montreal as well. There you go. They're getting snow for Christmas in America. We get rain. That's all we get. Um, it's snowing in New York as well. New York looks like a brilliant place to live because they go, they always seem to get snow. What what's this global global warning warming crap? We get all the bloody rain, but it still snows in America. Uh, four one, but we concede first because of Dyson and Hoover. Says Oliver Hammer. Who could you be talking about? Who could he be talking about? Seven minutes away from the official team news, but we know. Um, We know that Dean Henderson is going to start. Not really a surprise there. It's the rest of the team that we need to know about. Uh, please subscribe if you're new, by the way. Bottom right-hand corner. I'm just checking on what we're at. So we're 300 subscribers away from 924,000. So let's see if we can hit that before kickoff. Uh, 300 away. Bottom right-hand corner. Remember the United Stand. If you are new, we are live every night at 8 o'clock. Live every morning at 10 a.m. 
we're live for every match um went before team news all the way through to a full time then we've got match reaction then after that we've got a fan forum where we have flex and kg and guests and all of you all live fan cams as well we've got ricky on there loads and loads to get involved in you're going to absolutely love it so subscribe if you're new bottom right hand corner and remember second half on our website, I'll let you know, we do do our, our very own player ratings. Sod all this bloody Daily Mail or Manchester Evening News where one journalist give you his, gives you his marks. We do you. Not in a literal sense, but we get thousands of you to vote. Out of 10, six being average, player ratings for every Man United player and the manager. Thousands of people vote. And then when I do my match reaction, I'll give a score and it'll aggregate what your score is and we can compare. There you go. Being chilly in Texas, it's warm today. Texas weather is crazy, says Manuel Gutierrez. And Mark, would you ever go on The Jungle or any other British programmes like Strictly, says Joshua Bowles. I'd, I'd probably rather do Strictly than The Jungle because actually I'd learn something I don't know. Uh, Ed Kramer says, uh, Mark, global warming is true. It used to be snowing in Minnesota this time of year, but we hardly had any snow this winter. There you go. It's true. And global warming is about average climate spanning across years, not day-to-day -day weather. Just for anyone in comments who are reactive, says uh, Brad Barron. I've opened up a bag of... Um, yeah, trouble there, haven't I? Don't mention politics or global warming. Danny Mailer says, I hope it doesn't rest, Bruno. I have him triple captains. <laughs> um, I don't think he will rest, Bruno. Uh, I don't think he will. And Ben Shaw, Man United need to treat every game like a final, just like your career mode. Yep, yeah, career mode, massive. Big result today. Yeah, we're going to get, we're going to do it. No complacency. Raining fake tan down here in Essex, says Calhan. And I bloody, uh, Bruno is not injured, Tom. And uh, De Gea, so De Gea can get dropped, but not McTominay or Lindelof, says Ed Jamie. Yeah, yeah. Basically, yeah. Yeah. North of Ireland to enter six-week lockdown, says the United Reflection. Pfft. Look, whilst we've got football, let's just be happy. Football is a good thing, and we've got it. Any ideas what to get my dad for Christmas, Mark, says Reese William. Depends what he likes. Bottle of whiskey, if he's teetotal, don't get him a bottle of whiskey. Uh, cigars, if he doesn't smoke, don't get him that. Um, you could get him aftershave, if he doesn't like smelly things, don't get him that. Socks, nice jumper. Um, all sorts of stuff. All sorts of stuff, Reese. PS5, you could... Watch Going for Goldbridge, actually, from today. Loads of tips there. Buy people for Christmas what you want. You know, if you're getting a PS5, buy your dad FIFA 21 on PS5. You know, he can play with you. FIFA, nothing else. Um, Henderson is going to start the game today. We haven't got the official team news. We're four minutes out from that, but uh, we will get um, the team news coming through very, very soon. Uh must win game for Manchester United tonight. Yes, definitely. And we are... Uh, it's not on BT and it's not on Sky, Blazing Bond. It's on Amazon Prime, which worries me a little bit. Not, You know, it's fine for me last night. Absolutely fine. No issues with it at all. Not going to complain about it, but it does worry me a little bit, streaming services, because what we're going to get tonight is we're going to get, you know, people it's going to drop out for and all that, you know. Is streaming football the way forward? Obviously it is, but I'm, I'm more happy with a cable, really, because you don't get the old buffering and delay and everything like that. But Amazon are doing a good job. They're doing a really good job, but they can't help the fact that they're streaming it. Hi, Mark. Hope you're well. We've moved up a tier in Portsmouth now. Hopefully United will win tonight, but just fear we'll mess it up. Stay safe, everyone, says Rob Hathley. Thanks for all the super chats that are coming in. Everyone needs socks for Christmas, says Stephen Yates. You know what? I, you know what you could get your, your dad? Go back to the video I did about Manscaped and get him something like that. There you go. You might feel a bit wrong doing that. Welcome to the Members Club, Waldo. Thank you very much. Oh, that just reminds me. I just want to just, just check something here and see if anybody can actually do the community tab thing. Bam 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 bam. Uh, no, I don't, it doesn't look like it works, does it? In that sense. 
Uh, so yeah, we're, uh, I'm just going to get it on my phone now. We're about a couple of minutes away from the team news. Uh, thanks everyone who's tuning in. And I'm just going to send draw to you a message. Yes, mate. Um, I uh, set up a community tab post on the homepage and people cannot post emojams to that if you check it out. Okay, got a few super chats coming in here. Let me just pause that. And uh, hi, Mark. Happy Christmas to all. If we finish second behind Liverpool by five or six points, do you think people would give Ollie time and praise? Yeah. If he gets top, if he gets top four, he'll be in a job next season. Flick, Flick robbed as best manager, says James Bricknell. Probably, yeah. Probably not a bad point there. Actually, he did win the Champions League. Can I buy a United stand McTominay top? Says Robert McCormack. Doesn't. Funnily enough, we've we've not made one about McTominay yet. Look, that's the challenge for McTominay. If you do, has the has the United stand made a T-shirt for you? No. Maybe next year. Results have gone in our favour. One nil loss impending. Says Sam Newman. I get it. Look, I get it. I get it. I get why people are negative about um the uh, the way that we're playing at the moment and you know that that, that you know this will be just typical of united not to win tonight and i get it but I, we are going to win tonight herman badenhorst uh, welcome to the members club thank you very much team news is out i'm just going to get it now so let me have a look before you well you you, you lot oh i panicked and pressed the wrong button i'm on bloody spotify get off because uh, robbie's dancing on my stream as well He's dancing about Thomas Partey. Get out. That's not where I want to be. I want to be on there. On the first day of Christmas, sing it, Mark. Love your channel. Says JT69 United. Thank you very much. Um, let's have a look. So Henderson, Lindelof, Maguire. Tellez, Wambasaka, Bruno, Greenwood, Rashford. Martial, Matic, Pogba. I quite like this team. I do quite like this team. De Gea, Shaw, Fred, Mata, McTominay, Van der Beek and James. I actually quite like this team. Um, I don't like that he's not made any changes to centre-backs at all. But um, but I do quite like this team uh, because it's going back to our roots. I mean, obviously, the, the frustration is going to be that he's dropped he's dropped McTominay and Fred or rested McTominay and Fred, and there's still no place for Donny van der Beek. So I do understand the frustration on that. But let me just change the team for you. So no rest is uh, no rest for uh, Marcus Rashford is quite interesting. So let me pull him over there. He will be there. Uh, Paul Pogba will be playing in this position here. We're going to take off Scott McTominay. We're going to take off Fred. We're going to add in Nemanja Matic. Um, so that's how we're looking there. And obviously Mason Greenwood is going to start uh, again. Um, I'm surprised Mason Greenwood's starting, actually. I don't think he's played particularly well at the moment. But we do want goals today. So it's an opportunity him. And that's the team. There it is. That's how we're lining up. So let me just uh, go from there to there. So that's your team. Uh, Dean Henderson in goal. Lindelof and Maguire again. I mean, God knows when they're ever going to get a rest. If anyone needs a rest, rest in peace. You know, they, 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 their centre-back partnership needs needs killing, to be honest. We need to get, you know, somebody else playing. Uh, Tellez plays at left-back, so Luke Shaw gets a rest. wan at right-back. No one, he can't have a rest. Uh, Matic and Pogba come in and, and, and McTominay and Fred come out. Uh, Bruno up and Greenwood and Rashford and Martial. Good team had to be Matic or McTominay with Pogba, says Robert McCormack. Um, and also my first super chat if we don't win the next two games in hand due to Ollie's ignorance I will be 80% Ollie out no more room for naiveness as they are I'm not you know I'm not massively unhappy with that team I've got to be honest with you um, it's just, I like that midfield three of Matic, Pogba and Fred and that was the midfield that got us top four so I actually don't mind that midfield three obviously politically I do because Pogba you know has treated the club like shit and starts and Donny doesn't but we've got to move past that the treatment of Van der Beek and Twansebi is disgusting from Oli, says Lee Mack. And, um, but what I would say is that I'm, I'm a little bit confused why he never rests Maguire and Lindelof. I, I don't know. I mean, whether you think they're good players or whether you think they're trash players, they, need, they are human beings and they do need a rest. 
and they never seem to get a rest, but he's not rested them tonight. On the bench, De Gea, Shaw, Fred, Mata, McTominay, Van der Beek and James. Obviously no Cavani there, no Twan Sebi there, no Lingard there. Um, so no Igalo there. So no real striking options. Um, his bench is a bit crap, to be honest with you. I mean, why, why do you need five midfielders on the bench and no attacking options? I mean, why is Jesse Lingard not on the bench? Dan James on the bench. But we won't need them. We won't need them tonight because we're going to win. We're going to win this game anyway. We, you know, we will, we will, we will win. Tor looking at this lineup and saying, "I like this one." Says Enzo, and I would have liked to see Donny in with Pogba. I think they could both do the defence and offensive work. Says Mark Dobby. I think the the only issue I've got with that team is the centre backs. You know, when are they ever going to get a rest? That's my only issue with that team. I'm not going to say that I've got a huge issue with anything else. I like Paul Pogba. Um, in that role I think that's where you get the best out of Pogba and he, that's where he plays for France next to Kante um, I think the Man United will be fine in this game um, the only difference I would have made is that I would have liked to have seen Van der Beek maybe play where Greenwood's playing but he'll probably come off the bench to be honest with you uh, Henderson in goal Jamie says Big Dean come on bit of a sluggish midfield says Brandon 97 uh, he should have played Axel says Alexander and why is Pogba playing get out says Robbie Manuel um, Martial Masterclass incoming. We need a Martial goal tonight. We definitely do. Thank you, Sam Pundik, for that. Come on, Martial, says Matt MD7. I hope we get a good Pogba today, says Glenn Ora. And maybe Woodward is telling Ollie to play Pogba to raise his profile, says Dominator. And Pogba is bigger than the club, says Daniel Christie. But I, I agree with that. I don't like it, but I do agree with that. Of course, Paul Pogba's bigger than Manchester United. That's been proven over the last week. Nobody wants it to be the case. And what you or I think as fans is irrelevant because we don't run the club. But the way Man United have behaved over the last week, of course Paul Pogba's bigger than the club. Um, we've got to move on. You know, that's the decision that's been made. I think he's a very, very good footballer and I hope he plays well today, but he's proved he's bigger than Man United. I mean, his, board, his agent came out and said he doesn't like it here, he doesn't want to be here, that the manager doesn't know what he's doing. He starts in the Manchester derby and he starts against Sheffield United. Friday night or Saturday night or whatever it was, he does a post saying he's really, you know, he's going to work hard here. Man United tweet about it. Two days later, his agent's talking about leaving again. You know, they are in control of Manchester United and Man United have come across as very weak. Of course they have. But we need to move on from that because we're not, you know, we know Manchester United Football Club is run by, you know, people who aren't very good. We've got our principles, but they don't necessarily happen at the club. There's certain transfer business we would, we would have done in the summer. There's certain players we never would have given contracts to. Unfortunately, we are just loyal supporters of the club and we're not going to go anywhere. But the, some of the decisions they make are poor. But Pogba, I think, will be focused tonight and I think we'll benefit from it. Blame will still go to Oli if we lose this game, even though most of us are happy with this lineup before the game, says Beto. And hi, Mark. Love your content. Love the channel. How did you come up with the name of the channel as the United Stand and not the other one, says Love from India? Uh, says swap nil. Um, I don't know, mate. We just did. I don't know. Uh, Rashi or Greeny today, says Steve Ivo. Well, they're both playing. Uh, I hate me nobody's exposing the board and doing us all a favour, says Stan McDonald. And uh, good lineup, says Alex. So, what's your general thoughts about that lineup? I mean, I'm. I, I would like to have seen Bay or uh, Twan. I mean, they're not even on the bench. Eric Bay and Twan Sebi are not even on the bench. So. I would like to have seen that centre-back pairing. I, I can't stand that centre-back pairing. I don't think anybody can. And they're, they're constant. You know, even McFred, neither of them are playing tonight. They're getting a rest. Good news. But still, Maguire and Lindelof play. I don't think it's going to matter too much. But, I, you know, even from a human being point of view, they should be getting a rest. I know it's unethical to play Pogba, but we cannot let this opportunity pass because of one player. And he's stupid agent. I'm Pogba out and Ollie in, by the way, says Dibak Singh. No, look, I, I'm past it, you know. I'm past it. United have made a decision. Um, whether we agree with it or not, uh, I think we have to stick, you know, we've got to get behind the team. We know Pogba's going to play between now and the end of the season and I hope that he does play well when he does. Do I think that he should start over Van der Beek? No, but I'm not the manager. Uh, no Van der Beek again. I feel Oli is anti-Van der Beek. God knows why we bought him. Love Martial and Matic is playing. Fed up with that energizer bunny. Go United, says Abin. And Merry Christmas, Mark. Would you take Varane in the summer if it's the only signing of the summer? Well, Nazar Haroon, I would take Varane. Um, but with, I think we need more more than that, don't we? 
Uh, please subscribe if you are new. Bottom right hand corner. We're trying to get up to 923,000 before kickoff. Um, it's. Um, we are currently. Come on, that's slow. I just dreamed your photo of the snow. I DM'd you photo of the snow in New York. Go check it out. Love the vids. Come on, United, says Oliver Amo. I can't read your next bit. That's an attacking lineup, says Y. And Fred missing is got me worried, says Glenn Oro. Do Fulham a favour, Mark. Help us catch Arsenal, says an old brownie. And Mark, stop lying. You don't care where the vacuum and Hoover gets a rest. You just don't want to see them play. To be honest, they do need a rest, though, says Shay. Mate, I'm not lying. I'm not right. I'm not lying at all. I don't want them to play. I can't. There's nowhere for me to hide. I cannot lie. Put Martial on. Put on the Martial shirt, says Bradley Labis. Mate, who knows what's under here? That's all I'm going to say. Who knows what is under this zip? It's got a zip on. There might, be, there might be two layers. There might be no layers. It might be my bare chest. You know, it might be that. It's not. If I was Donny, I'd get his agent to have a go at Ollie and then he might get some game time, says Ashley Jenkins. I would rather have Pogba, Fred or Matic, uh, says uh, DJ. Um, and thoughts on the lineup, says UG. Uh, I mean, I haven't really given you my thoughts. I'm going to get flex on in a minute. Um... I haven't really given you. My, I, I don't think it's a bad lineup. I'd prefer. I'd rather see Matic and Pogba than uh, than McTominay and Fred. So in that sense, I'm happier because it's got more attacking elements to it. Um, I think the front three. Hopefully, I mean that. To be honest with you, that front six is the front six that got us um, top three. Um, so going back to his roots in a way. Ten out of ten. Oli now. How to ruin Van der Beek in less than six months? It's a joke. Says Anthony Jury. And centre-back pairing don't need a rest because they don't run. Do you think Mason will play up front and Martial on the left wing? Hopefully Donny comes on around 60 minutes, says Joe and Daniel. Um, yeah, I, I don't disagree with that. I don't, agree, I don't disagree with that. I don't think it, I don't think I know, says uh, McGoldbridge starts for... Uh, McGoldbridge starts for Sheffield, says Wrestle India. And would the team be better with Martial on the wing and Greenwood up top, says James Pender? Well, it might be better, but I don't think it's going to be what um, Martial wants. Martial wants to play uh, up front. Mark, hasn't he gone with the post-lockdown team besides Tellers and Henderson? So gone with his best team. Donny has to start versus Leeds, says Salah Ahmed. He won't... St Donny van der Beek has got no chance of starting. Um, against Leeds absolutely none I'll tell you what I, what do you want me to do if he starts he won't start absolutely not his only chance of starting against Leeds was if he started tonight had an absolute worldie and forced his way into the team and even then he wouldn't pick him Donny van der Beek has got no way at all is he going to start against Leeds at the weekend McTominay and Fred will be rested and De Gea's being rested and I think Luke Shaw will play in that game there's no way Donny van der Beek's playing. He is the sixth choice midfielder for Manchester United now. Flex, can you hear me? Let me just turn the audio up so they can hear you. Okay, so uh, uh, what is your thoughts? Wait a minute. A couple of super chats. Watching my first match without my pup, Guinness, who passed away yesterday. He watched every match with me. Anyone having a pint, please have one in his honour. Oh, rest in peace to uh, Guinness. I hope he wasn't a puppy when he passed away because that's horrible news, Andrew yeah. Rossi. Hopefully you called him pup. Because he was your pup from being a puppy to an old age dog. But uh, rest in peace, Guinness. Um, and Ali Dapp says, like the lineup, no Scott, thank God. Wish Ollie would drop Harry the Hoover for Axel and maybe play Fozu Menzamore. Need a Tony Hattrick. Happy holidays, says Ali Dapp. Yeah, happy holidays to everyone. Um, what's your thoughts on the team, Flex? Yeah, positive, man. I'd, I'd, like I tweeted, you can't, I don't think you can, I think that the worry with this is that we needed Ollie to pick. Um, a team that could go out there and play on the front foot. Uh, you know, he's, he, could, he obviously knows that the team's going to have a lot of the ball in this game. Um, and it's a chance to pin them in um, as well as they want to sit in, don't they, Sheffield United? They're not going to come at us. So we're going to need movement. We're going to need creative players. We're going to need people who make things happen. Um, and, I think, and I think that's quite bright. Yes, we can talk about the Donny situation, which I'm sure we'll, we'll, we'll continue to talk, to talk about. And the two in Zabi, you know, you're talking about the centre-backs. Remember, I said to you, I'm just past it because I just know, like, it's just never a conversation anymore. Like, it's done. Like, it's yeah, until he gets I, new centre halves, he's just never going to do it. Not going to do it. But, but you know, he's resting McTominay and Fred, which is the right thing yeah. to do. 
Um, yeah. He's resting Luke Shaw, which is the right thing to do. Yeah. And then his centre backs, I think, pretty much since January, I don't think he's given him a rest at all. No, he hasn't. But that shows that shows how little. That's what I mean. It shows how little trust he has in the others. Eric Bailly, forget Rojo and Jones, but Eric Bailly and Tuan Zabi, for whatever reason, we now know, well, we've known for a long time, Oli doesn't rate them as a pair. Never played them together um, and very rarely puts them in, um, in as individuals with, with either Maguire or Lindelof. It's only injuries that, that make it happen. Like an actual injury, like when Lindelof's back was a bit dodge. Yeah. I think Axel came in then when uh, Maguire done his toe or something. I think he was out for a bit, one game. But um, so we know what it is. So I've just stopped kind of, do you know what I mean? Just it is what it is. I just never expect him to do it. But I like what he's done with the team. I think as long as the shape's fine, um, we, we should be fine because it's a game where we're going to dominate the ball. So the first thing I want to say is you can't label it at Oli straight away in terms of, you know, when we, when we were laughing and joking on the Flex and KG show when you came in and I was like, you can guarantee he's probably going to pick Fred and Matic or yeah. Tomini and, and Matic and you're going to go mad. And, you know, he hasn't done that. Maybe he watched it and thought, oh, I don't want to have the backlash. Do you know what I mean? Um, he hasn't done that. So, you know, and then, like you said, Tellez over Shaw. Um, not saying that Tellez is miles better than Shaw because I'm not really in that camp. I'm just, there's different games and Tellez can bring something and Luke Shaw's still reliable. Sure but for this leads. game, I think he's, he's exactly. He's, yeah, I think he and you, you're going to need to be defensively sound. They're going to have a lot of energy. They're going to be running all over the place. It's going to be a high intensity game. He's using the right players for the right games. I don't mind that. Um, the Pogba thing, look, we've, we've almost got to move past it. It still makes you feel a bit uncomfortable because you just don't want to just forget about it. But unfortunately, the games are coming thick and fast. What are you supposed to do? Do you know what I mean? Keep sitting here saying it's a disgrace and all of that. So it is what it is. And like you said, before I come on, you'll get you'll get a focus Pogba today. You'll get you'll get one who, who wants to play and gonna yeah. get quite a lot of ball. So it's only a good thing for Man United. Um it'd be interesting. You know, I've done the show with Ricky yesterday and he was talking about, you know, keeping that four four two and you know, just playing players when when we don't have the ball to be in position. You know, I think what Ricky got tried to get across to me yesterday, which was quite interesting, was that he's not saying that we have to play defensive football. He's saying when we don't have the ball, we just got to take up good positions off the ball. But today, we should have loads of the ball. We should have loads of the ball. And we should be we should be playing with intensity. So we just better not united this up. We have to win. No messing about. I tell you what, it's um it's it's funny. I mean, look, Ricky's got his own opinions and some of them are very, very good, but this is this is interesting with this team tonight. If I just go back to the screen as well, um, this team tonight, especially the front six, um, well, apart from actually Henderson and Tellez, really, um, this this is the team that got us third place from lockdown when we came back. This was the team that he never really changed. He broke some record, didn't he? That he just kept picking it and picking it and picking it. And, uh, you know, people can say they're not happy with this team. I understand, you know, I, I would like to see Donny van der Beek starting. But to be honest with you, I, I, I like that front six compared to the front six as he's been playing all season so far. Sinead O'Donnell says, Hi, Mark. How many players of the current crop get into the 99 team? Personally, I'd only have one. Bruno, bored with the drab performances. And uh, also, instead of Neil Ashton, maybe Flex can be the PR man for Ollie, says Red Baron. Um, <laughs> well, you were Ollie out last week. And I know that, don't know about that. Um, well, they, were, that. they were saying you were Ollie out last week. Um, <laughs> I mean, look, I, I think the, the good thing about this team for me is that, that um, he hasn't picked McTominay and Fred and he has picked Pogba in the deeper role. I prefer Pogba in this role. It's where he plays for France. I know certain members of Pogba FC think he's a centre attacking midfielder. He actually hasn't played that position for years um, and never really played it much anyway. I think Pogba is more damaging in the role that he's playing today in a positive way. So I'm happy with that. Um, I still think there's a good player in Matic. He's just had a very weird season. So it's an opportunity for him. And look, Greenwood, Martial and Rashford back in that familiar position. Um, you know, the, the, if we win today and we win well, we've, we've, you know, there'll be a lot of pressure to say this is the team you should be picking anyway. You never should have changed it. Exactly. I, um, it's difficult because also what we can't slip into, and this is, again, we haven't won the game yet, so you know me, I'm not getting too cocky. No disrespect, Sheffield United. But if we do win with this team, that doesn't, you know, you can't, you, we're supposed to go and win this game with the players that we got out there. Do you know what I'm saying? Against the team that we're playing. So we can't lose sight of that. So whether you win, we could have essentially as well, you could have played Matic and Fred today and Matic and McTominay and still dominated the ball, still create chances. We probably could have got a 3-0 win as well because, you know, like you said, quite rightly so, Mark, during the week, Sheffield United factually are not a good side this season. They are absolutely struggling. So we should be able to put out a variation of teams that might not be the team we want to see going forward, et cetera, et cetera. But 
Um, I want to kind of stay away from if we win and win well with this team. See, that's why you have to play all the attacking players all the time because it's our best team because we've seen other games. I don't need to remind people which games they are, not even just this season, just even last season, where we've played all the attacking players, our A team, and before all of us as fans had found our best team. And then we're, less, we're left puzzled and perplexed when we get turned over. Do you mm. know what I mean? So really the inconsistencies and the tactics and coaching is the reason why we're not very consistent for me. Um, it isn't just the fact that, you know, the, about the players that he picks. Uh, Uber, uh, welcome to the Members Club, Spencer Beatrice. And uh, there was a super chat there from Uber Mellon saying that uh, he's uh, frustrated about the Donny van der Beek situation and um, get a fi- got a feeling that Donny will want to move soon, says Ray S. Um, what do you think about the Donny van der Beek situation? Um, obviously not starting again. Some people me- think he might start against Leeds. I said not a chance is he starting against Leeds. He's the sixth choice midfielder. At the weekend, he played Bruno and Pogba and McFred. Today, Matic has had a chance and Donny hasn't. Um, he is not um, anywhere near an, a, a first team start. I think he should be. I think when he's been asked to play, he's played really, really well. But like it or lump it everybody he is nowhere near the first team at the moment he is the sixth choice midfielder um and that's where we're at with it yeah uh the only way he plays is um multiple injuries or covid yeah you know let's just be honest um i'll be very very surprised if ollie is well we can't say he's resting donny van der Beek for leeds because he ain't been starting game no. so it ain't that can't you can't use that as an excuse um and the fact that fred and, and mctominay aren't playing um, would probably give you a little bit of an indication depending on how well Pogba gets on because that game listen I know I don't I want to get this one out of the way but you've got to kind of have a little bit, bit of a forethought to it because of the, the changes he's made that will be a high intensity game you need runners you need to you need to match Leeds' work rate if you match their work rate it will be alright um, if you don't then you can you can get overrun so you need combative players who get about the pitch so I think we'll see Fred and McTominay in that game in the mid in the midfield or yeah, maybe yeah. Pog, if Pogba does play really well and he wants to keep him going he might do Pogba and Fred but I think McTominay is all nailed on to start against Leeds uh, please subscribe everyone if you're new we're getting close to 924,000 we're just a couple of hundred ways now so bottom right hand corner to subscribe to the channel uh, uh, get involved with the channel it's free to do uh, uh, bottom right hand corner subscribe worst team ever says Golden Frieza and also I understand that people are upset that Van der Beek isn't playing I am too but give him time and Van der Beek will get his chances Re. and that's a you know that's a very relaxed and mature approach the counter argument to that is we have waited we waited for the first two months of the season uh, he then played games and played very well then Pogba and McTominay came back from injury and he's back down to number six again. I think there's a valid point about Van der Beek. I don't think it's a, I don't think it's a hashtag Oli out point because we will win tonight and then you're going to moan about one player and the team's going to win and the team is more important than any player. That, that's always the case. But there's definitely a there's there's definitely a valid frustration around the handling of Van der Beek. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie about that. It's it's a very weird situation. He's already been patient. He was patient at the start of the season. People got injured, he played, he played well, they came back and he was instantly back down to number six again. He's not been treated well, Ollie's not treated him well, but it doesn't mean we can't win tonight. Ollie still thinks Van der Beek is a Bruno replacement, says Valavaf. Yeah, but despite never really playing him as Bruno's replacement, he played next to Fred, he played off the right, he played off the left and he played well. And also, you know, he's played with Bruno and played well. The reason Oli doesn't play Van der Beek is because he only sees him as Bruno's number 10 role and Bruno is a must starter. Oli has to go, says Daz OW. Well, that's a failing on Solskjaer if he thinks that. Uh, there are certain fans out there who think Van der Beek is just a number 10 when he isn't. Um, but, uh, you know, the reality is he's not picked Van der Beek and um, we should, we, we've we got to focus on this game and I, I've been very, very confident that we're going to win it. What, what what What's your score prediction for tonight, Flex? How do you think it's going to go? Um, it is a very attacking team and you can't help but kind of say... 3 0. Um, <laughs> but uh, I'm going to go 2 0. Yeah, I've gone with at least 3 0. Hashtag free Donny, suspenser, Beatrice. Um, I mean, I, 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 don't know, I don't know what your thoughts are about this game and everybody else's, but I think it's, um, you know, my mind is already on the Leeds game, and that, that, that's the only thing I worry about with United. I don't see anything about Sheffield United that worries me unless we struggle to score um, 
basically, if I was Oli, I'd be like, like, if we score two goals, we've got three points because they shouldn't score two goals against us. They, they, they've got one point. They've only scored five goals all season. But we need to get, uh, for me, I think we need to get the, the tempo of this game going. Um, I don't want to see sideways passing between the centre-backs and Matic. We've got, to, we've got to press them. We've got to keep an eye up the pitch. I think Tellez is a really good selection in this game. I mentioned this in the preview. Really like Luke Shaw, my man of the match against Man City. But what a game statement to send out to start Tellez because we're going to be attacking a lot. And this exactly. is what we bought Tellez for. So I give Oli a lot of applause for that because Tellez had to start to get today. And I think he's really important. Yeah, he is. But what's what's important, what is interesting though, because you're right with exactly why I think Tellez, this is a game for him. But it'd be very interesting if we didn't have Leeds in particular on the weekend. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. With, with such quick succession, because then if you think about it from the other side of the coin, Ollie's looking at Luke Shaw and thinking, right, today's Thursday, next game Sunday. Mm, that's very close. And that Leeds game is going to be really intense. I'd rather have you for that than this. Do you know what I mean? He could just be putting in Tellez, where, not from a tactical point. Do you know what I mean? He might have just gone, I can't play Luke in two of those. I can only play him in one. And if I can have to choose one, I'll choose Leeds. And we'd, we'd agree with that, though, to be fair. Yeah. Um, well, I would um, for tactical reasons. Um, but also, it also helps because for this game, it just suits Tellez anyway. So it's, that's kind of like a double win for Oli on that one, I think. Yeah, it's interesting actually. If we didn't have had a game, if we hadn't have had a game at the weekend, I wonder whether he would have actually picked. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. If the game was on Monday night, or the game was against, no disrespect, just someone who don't play as intensely. Say the game was against, um, I don't know, uh, Wolves or something, where they sit back and stuff. They're not really as intense, or. Yeah. Maybe not Wolves, that's probably a bit bad, bad example. But you know what I mean. It's um, perfect right, for Tellers right. anyway, so I'll give Ollie credit yes. even if he doesn't deserve it. Um, Rick exactly. Out says, the Dortmund director of football who bullies us and the Leipzig coach who bullies us, and I'll be happy. Sorry, but Ollie doesn't have what it takes. Um, Ollie doesn't have the inventiveness or the coaching setup to develop Dondi van der Beek, says Emily Derry. What was Danny van der Beek promised? We hear about managers convincing players to come. Can't imagine Ollie convinced him by saying he'd be a bench warmer. And Uber Mel, that's from Uber Mellon. Big ups, Mark and Flex from USA. I think Ollie won't play van der Beek since he plays fearless ball and prefers scared ball over risk taking. Uh, happy holidays, says Chris Andromeda. Look, you know, we could spend hours talking about Donny van der Beek and we're not going to because we've got a really important game and ultimately if we win tonight and we beat Leeds at the weekend, we're in a really good position. Doesn't mean that you're not wrong to question the manager's motives and reasons behind the signing of van der Beek and the treatment of van der Beek. I totally get it. I really do. But I don't think it's going to be a problem tonight. Um, and ultimately, I think you're probably getting yourself upset about something that's not for now. Um, he'll win the game tonight and if he bothers to read anything on social media about Van der Beek he'll sit there smugly with his glass of uh, hot chocolate tonight and his little hat on and he'll be like all warm in his onesie and he'll go I got it right I got it right Karaki they can shut up about Donny and and he will be right because he's going to win tonight he cannot lose tonight he could this is why I'm really happy he didn't pick McFred because Matic and Pogba do you know what? It's so much more likely that he calls Karik Kaza than Kariki, but the, the way you just think it's Kariki is bad. We'll call him Mikey. Mikey. Yeah, well, My Michael. He probably calls him Michael. Uh, Giggles <laughs> says, managers like captains who mirror their own personality. That's why he's chosen Maguire and won't drop him. And uh, I don't understand. Pogba's agent talks trash, then Pogba gets multiple starts. What message does that send? You know what? I mean, I'll just ask you very quickly about that, Flex, because I said before you came on, you might not have heard it, I said, the Pogba thing with me, I've relaxed about it because I ain't getting, I'm not getting, about this nut shirt, I'm not getting stressed, angry and moody about it when the football club, who run the club, have dis made the decision they've made. They've decided, to, they've decided to pick Pogba. I ain't going to sit here going, I hope he has a crap game because I want Man United to win. As long as he performs in that shirt, I'll be like, it's difficult. I'm not going to celebrate his goals as much as I celebrate Rashford's or, or, or Bruno's because I, I do think it's hard when you know a player would go tomorrow if he could. I tell you what, mate, it depends when he scores the goal, mate. If it's last minute against Leeds and he hits one in the top I'm, I, will, I will celebrate it. But you know what I mean? <laughs> I, I do understand people like, yeah, yeah. you know, he doesn't want to be here and that makes it hard. But having said that, he's played a bloody blinder and so is his agent. They have proven they sh they're not bigger than Man United. They're definitely not. But the way we've acted, we have basically made him look bigger than Man United, in my opinion, because 
what has happened twice in the last two weeks is very derogatory and yet he started both games so he's played a blinder and I think Woodward and Ollie and everyone else has made themselves look weak but I'm not really bothered about it now because the club have made that decision yeah you've got to move on but I tell you what it, as the saying goes it, it, it's proved that Rayola and Paul Pogba have got the club by the by the you know what that's that's what it proves yeah. but I tell you what also this is an interesting scenario because let's say that the club started disciplining Pogba right because of his agent and stuff or the the image that it's given off and started dropping him and not playing him do you think that would have forced Pogba to actually you know speak up or get rid of Rayola or whatever because I think that they're onto a win-win because they're like, we can say what we want. They're not going to bench you. They ain't just going to banish you to the under-23s. There they won't be a consequence for you. And when you know there won't be a consequence, you do what you want, don't you? Well, so in terms the, of when, not when shutting things down. When the consequence is you're on the bench and then you you, you, you say you don't want to be here and then you're starting. <laughs> it's like, that's what I'm oh, saying. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So that's what I mean. It'd be interesting to see what would have happened if they actually did start just dropping him or making him not make match day squads and Ollie's doing the whole hamstring thing every every week when really he sat him down and says, Paul, until you come out and clarify what it is you're saying, not just to me, but to the United fans because they deserve it yeah. because we've got circus going around. You're not you're not in the match day squad. Let, imagine that. And, that, and that. But what I will say is I don't think Paul Pogba is unprofessional in terms of like he won't try and train or he won't try and run in it. Do you know what I'm saying? He he loves playing football. That's the biggest thing you've got to separate. I just think the respect of towards the club and the fans has, has been the, the question point, not his commitment to actually kick a ball around the field. You see what I'm saying? Uh, Sean Thomas says, it's pre- precisely because everyone everything seems to be set up for a United win that I'm not confident. We've never been able to capitalise on these kind of opportunities. We're going to be fine. We're going to be absolutely fine. Um, and what was going to say... Uh, uh, you know, that you raise a good point there because we could have... Um, dropped Pogba until he came out and apologised um, and played Donny van der Beek and I'm sure a lot of people would be saying that but we've we've gone down this road and I think it makes it makes us look weak um, I've spoke to a lot of people over the last couple of weeks United, uh, United fans obviously even Liverpool fans uh, Arsenal fans and they've said you know the way you've acted like that it, it, it's pretty weak and I said well you know what are we supposed to do about it as fans? It's funny Pogba's playing more now than before. What his manager said makes no sense as Chelsea. And is Oli ruining his chances of getting future back and in the market when he isn't making proper use of a midfielder in Donny van der Beek, says Gerard Twimi. And basically we've gone from no one's bigger than the club to all of a sudden Pogba is bigger than the club. His agent says what he wants and no action, says Sean Negative Turner. The idea of not dealing with Mino Riola's clients is naive. He represents some of the best players in the world, says Nazar Haroun. Well, yeah, you know, Gravenberg at uh, Ajax, very good young player. He's represented by Riola and there will be more in the future, won't they? You know, it's, it's interesting it's... Interesting quote here, Mark, on Oli, why um, Henderson's starting. It's one I had penciled in for him early on. I feel Dean is ready as well now to take these games on because he's played well when he's played. David did really well against City. It's nothing to do um, with that. It's not anything to do with that. So basically he's saying, I looked at the calendar before, right at the beginning of the bloody uh, thing and said, right, you're going to play against Sheffield United home and away. Ridiculous. I mean, this is the manager of Manchester United, everybody. Look, that's what he said. That's I'm not Ollie said. out. I'm not Ollie out. But don't anybody tell me he's a top level coach at the moment because he's not. <laughs> he's not. And people think we can win the league. And I, I think it would be hilarious if we do because I don't care if he wins the league this year and then he finishes sixth for the next five years. We've won the league. It doesn't matter, you know. But I mean, he, he, it's just amazing. That is absolutely. I don't like this goalkeeping situation. I don't know what you think, Flex, about it, but I don't like it. To me, a, um, a goalkeeper is a... You have a number one goalkeeper and you don't pencil in a game for somebody else. It's not how it works for me. No, you, you, you let you them don't. play the Carabao I, Cup games against Morecambe, but you don't do it in the Premier League. Oh, no, yeah, Dean's the Dino's. Dino's. It's like what KG says when he knocks on the door. You're not number one, mate. I, I know you're on 140k, yeah. and I know you were brilliant last year, but you're not the number one. And uh, it's just amazing. It's like so. It's like uh, Niraj says. It's like Ollie's playing football manager, which apparently he's a very big fan of. And it is almost like football manager management because you're like, oh, fatigue and morale's dropping a little bit with uh, Dino. Give him a game against Sheffield United where he'll have nothing to do. I think for me, I like the fact that De Gea has competition. I like that. I don't mind that. De Gea's benefited, hasn't he? But I don't think Dean Henderson. That's what I'm saying. So essentially, 
you know what I mean? And I know you can't, you don't want to use people, but this is this is in the football terms. We needed someone who was going to come in and give David De Gea genuine, genuine competition and push him to his limits and, and see if he could step up or not. David De Gea has managed to do that. It's a bonus that Dean's our player. He's come through, he's come through the ranks and he's done really well at Sheffield United for two seasons, proved that he can play at this level, made his England debut. The only people that win out of it is Manchester United. That's what we want. Um, what I don't like, though, like you said there, I don't, I don't want to hear that at the beginning, you're just doing the sentiment thing of, well, I'll tell you what, Endo, there's it, it, a couple of games here. You definitely start those. You know, I don't, You'll be I don't playing really against Everton next week. Don't, don't worry, Dino. I know you played brilliant, but I need, I promised the hair against Leeds. And I don't, I really, I really don't, yeah. I don't want a scene. It's Christmas, Dino. I've played you Sheffield well, United and I've penciled you in for Everton. Well, that's happened? what happened though. Yeah. You're knocking on Lee's door at Carrot and say, well, I've kept a clean sheet there. Yeah. Uh, well, I've made five world class saves. The thing, is, the thing is, the thing is, right? The thing is, uh, Leeds haven't been in the league for about 12, 12 years, Endo. And uh, De Gea's I, I never played against Cavett, them. <laughs> exactly. Do you know what I mean? So that's, that's what it's going to be. All right then. So I'm playing against Everton in the Carabao Cup. Yeah. Uh, who's playing against Leicester? Well, um, I promised it to uh, David because um, he really wanted to go home for Spain for Christmas, and he can't because of COVID. So I've said. Oh, I, I tell you what, I've give it. I've give it Sergio. Well, he granted their last season with us, really, and I think they should get a game. And what are we doing against Wolves? Aye. Rock, paper, scissors. Karaki, you can be the ref. Sean Negative Turner says, "I'm Ollie out. What is he doing? Dropping De Gea in a league game because Henderson was penciled in? Is it because he played for Sheffield United? Unreal." But it you know what? There that, are though. elements. There are elements. We're taking the piss. We're going to win tonight. We're in a title race. Look, neither of us are saying Oli out. We're just having a bit of banter. But remember, there are elements to Solskjaer that are massively naive. And they are. And even the most staunchest Oli inner knows this. And remember, I don't like this. I don't know where you stand on it, Flex. But it's not the first time we've heard of stuff like this. Like I penciled him in a long time ago. Because remember the penalty and it was like it's and he and he's I think it was against Wolves Pogba missed or something like that and it was like why didn't such and such take it and he said yeah. well we just decide uh, whoever feels yeah. like it, <laughs> it's whoever feels good yeah. whoever feels good at the time <laughs> that's what, banter that, I mean that's, yeah. that is banter that is it's a lack that, of leadership isn't it you don't even do that on Sunday League like that's banter that is whoever feels good. I just don't like it. I just don't like it. Maybe it's funny because my daughter, I'm old school, I don't my, know. my daughter's team was playing at the, at the weekend, and it was a really tight game. And, and the referee was 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 funny. He was an old fella, and it, it bounced up in the box and caught this player's arm, and he gave a penalty. And I I turned round to the, the other coach and I said, you know what? I, I know even though we benefited, I don't think that's a penalty. To be fair, anyway, yeah. we got the penalty, and we both shouted for somebody to take the penalty, and then somebody else picked up the ball and then they turned back to us and were like, they want to take it. And then all the parents were looking at us and we were like, all right then. And then they bloody... <laughs> no, but and that's because you got the parents there. Yeah. You just... and then that's they... all that is. And then they bloody like... missed. And I, I went mad. I went, I, I turned around. I said, never again. I don't care whether the parents hate us or not. She's bloody missed it. it. Should be She's the... missed. It, it... I didn't want her to take it and the bloody, she missed it anyway. But um, yeah, it's... Yeah. Uh... yeah. But no, no. I mean, look, look. That, that that was that was a decision by us there, and 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 you know you get it wrong, you get it right, you know, and and it's amateur football, and you know it was a good save by the keeper. It's, I'm, I'm I'm joking really, but the point is, there's no decision from Solskjaer on the penalties. I told them before they go out, enjoy yourselves, and if it's a penalty, whoever's feeling good, whoever's feeling good at the time. And, uh, Ollie's promised Granty a start against Everton. Says Patrick Cahill. Uh, I would rather have Michael Clegg. Uh, sorry, what was that? I'd rather have Michael Clegg and William Prunier in this defence than we've got. We've currently got says Paul Conley, and can't wait till we get Ajax in the Europa League. And Ollie says I had Donny penciled in for that one. <laughs> just, 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 sorry. That's a good one, yeah. Oh, yeah. that is a good one. That is a good one. He'll probably bring Donny into the office this week. Donny, come in. Oh, the Europa League, Ajax are in it. You might get two games. Yeah, don't, don't, don't go get, don't get upset. <laughs> Uh, Gareth Morgan says if Henderson is on loan he can't step in when we need it sure and tell us is okay but not Henderson and De Gea damned if he does damned if he doesn't says Gareth Morgan and do you remember those paper fortune tellers girls would make in primary school I'm sure that's how Ollie picks his team oh is that that one where you go like that it's like a bit of paper and you you know it's like red blue open that one yeah I know what you mean yeah you change up and it gives you a different outcome yeah but that uh, that super chat from Gareth Morgan's interesting because he said everyone's alright with him swapping sure and tell us but with the goalkeeper it's not okay and my opinion on that flex is that well no it's not because a goalkeeper is very different to swapping your fullback a goalkeeper is um 
you know, I've told this story before, but I'm sure you, I don't know whether you've ever played centre back. I played at quite a good level when I was like 16, 17. Saturday, Sunday yeah. team, different goalkeepers. The more vocal goalkeeper um, I preferred playing with, even though the Sunday goalkeeper was quiet and better. I just preferred the vocal goalkeeper because he led the back line. And the one thing, it's very difficult for a defence to keep playing with different goalkeepers, is what I'm saying. Um, and goalkeepers are a different, you know, they're, they always get called this in football. They're like a different breed. If you're a goalkeeper, you've got to have a certain mindset because you could spend 90 minutes doing nothing or, you know, you're isolated. You, you've got to keep yourself focused. And um, goalkeepers live off consistency and form. And that's that's why I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a big fan. Plus, you can't do 50-50. You know, one goalkeeper is going to play more than the other. Yeah, you, you, you're right. You're bang on because... I mean, I, I don't really, I'm not really fuming that that Henderson's playing. I just, just, just the reason why. The fact that it was so planned from ages ago. Um, that's, uh, that's not, I don't like that. I don't like that. Do you know what I mean? I, I think, because that means that before we even kicked the ball this season, you know, David De Gea could have kept 10 clean sheets in a row and then he was still going to go, yeah, but I promised him. I don't like that. I don't like that. You're not running a... You're not running a, um, a nursery. And it's a three-point game as well. It's not Sheffield United in the FA Cup. It's a three-point game. And look, I, I exactly. think Dean Henderson's a very good goalkeeper. I'm not saying... Yeah, that... it'll be fine. It'll be yeah. fine tonight. Yeah. It'll be fine. And you know what? Some of it, it is, it is. you know, I think it's just a bit, it's just nice to see. Oh, you know, they gave him so much, you know, effort and time and that. And now he might keep a clean sheet against them. You know, it's Oli way of saying it's just nice for Dino. I think it's well, he's like put himself that. in that situation where he's got to give him game time, hasn't he? Because yeah. you know he's, he's on a lot of money as well, and he's, he's got to mm -hmm. do that. Fergie would play Kuschak for Mickey Mouse Premier League team, says Michael Kelly. And Mark, I love you, but you can't seriously say we're in a title race. Let's take it game by game and see where we are at in January, says Sebastian Duke. Paul Scholes, Mark. What? Paul Scholes says, um, the one concern I would have is Matic playing next to Pogba. I don't think his legs are what they were. Um, he's quality, don't get me wrong. Beautiful left foot, but I think Fred or McTominay suits him more. Don't, I don't. I don't disagree with that. Do we disagree with that? I just think. Yeah. But I think what tonight is, in you know, it's a contradiction what Ollie's done tonight because I've got no problem with Matic and Pogba playing tonight in them roles. They they got us to third. I mean, and I think Scholes is wrong, really, because Paul Scholes to say a midfielder's legs have gone when he was playing in our midfield at fifty nine is a bit. <laughs> a bit it's a bit of a piss take. Yeah, but really. Paul Scholes can do that though. Let's not get that twisted though. Paul Scholes could fucking come out of retirement now and still play. A hundred percent, he could. But Nemanja Matic is only thirty-one, I think. So, and Nemanja Matic was running our midfield three months ago. So we got third yeah. place because of Matic. Nah, he can still play. He's he can still goal. play. That's what I mean. Scholes should be saying, "I'm worried about Matic because he's not having a good season." I don't think he should be saying that he's he's passed it because you know yeah. Scholes is a midfielder who had that. He was accused of that a few times. So a little bit disrespectful from Scholes there, but. He raises a good point that I think Matic has been poor this season. However, the contradiction of the team is that he's done a clever thing. You said it. He's rested McTominay and Fred for this game and they'll use them against Leeds and it's only two and a half days till that game. So Matic and Pogba are on good money. They should be, you know, they're international quality players. They should be, be able to be trusted against Sheffield United so you can rest McTominay and Fred. Got no problem with that. But I think the contradiction is you're like, why is he not picking McTominay and Fred? Because you look at the centre backs and they've been picked again. But what for me, what he's done is he's rested McTominay and Fred, and, and that's why I haven't got a problem with it. Yeah, exactly. And you know, and I keep saying that you, you do have to look a little bit forward because the game is so soon. It's only in a couple of days' time. Yeah. Um, a few days. Time. What would we do? Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Yeah. So three days' time. Um, it it. You, you've got to look at that. You can't just be naive. And I know you've got to take game by game, but you've got to have a little bit of that in your forefront. And if he would have rinsed McTominay and Fred today, and then we had to play open with people with no legs against Leeds, and then we get run all over, um, you're thinking, why didn't he rest one of them? And you know what I mean? We've accused him of Olive doing that before. So you've got to give him credit where the credit's due. Um, half time table, look, we're 18th. Oh, mate. We've we got a tally up of, of the points of, of half time table. And we're 18th, mate. Basically, at half time, we're always losing. No one, no one gets awarded the title at half time. <laughs> it's a 90 minute game. There's a clue there. Um, Harold Holst Fairsfault, who I like, I love saying his name, um, says, Why are you so disrespectful of Solskjaer? He's second if he wins those two games. I truly believe he knows his game. And remember, he got no transfers oh. he wants. Sorry. And maybe we should sell De Gea, says Chelsea Husland, in the summer. He's 28. 
when he still have some value. Peak will start when Pogba leaves. Beak will start when Pogba leaves. Beak is Pogba's replacement, says Chelsea. Well, if he's Pogba's replacement, then we're doing a hell of a bad job of letting him know that. And we're doing a hell of a bad job of introducing him to Manchester United life, aren't we? Um, he might not want to be his replacement after a year of this. So uh, we need to be a little bit careful. Please subscribe if you're new, by the way. Bottom right-hand corner, we're getting really close to 924,000. We're on 923 at the moment. Bottom right-hand corner, please subscribe and, and share the video. Thanks to everyone who's tuning in. Um, Flex has gone for a 2-0. I've gone for a 3-0 Man United win. I'll be disappointed if they score tonight. I really will. I think that um, the only the only risk, I suppose, is set pieces. That's where we, we, we've struggled uh, the most this season. Um, Oli kept Fred out. Yeah, I think it's about fitness for Fred, really. We've got a lot of games. The thing is, as well, what we have to take into account is that we have got a lot of games coming up. We have got Leeds in two and a yeah, half days. Loads. We've got exactly. Leicester... Um, a week on Saturday. We've got Everton next Wednesday. Uh, Christmas games, period, man. Yeah. You've got to rotate the squad. That's why. That's what I mean. Especially, I think the Christmas period, right, and into the new year of just after the the New Year's Day games. From now till then, this is where the team selections, apart from something that's absolutely ludicrous, you've got to kind of get behind it because you know you don't know how the players are feeling in training. You don't know if they're if they're carrying little niggles, if they're not looking quite right, or to get, you know what I mean? The games are coming thick and fast. So you kind of got to get behind it in this little... I think this is the most excusable period of time. Whereas, like, when the games are a bit more staggered out and you go, well, we've got a whole week until we got X, Y, Z, or we've only got uh, Sunday, Wednesday, Sunday again. Do you know what I mean? You can you can excuse it. You can get onto him then. But I think when the games are coming this fast, what is it? Six games in 16 days, is it? Yeah, something ridiculous. It's a hell of a lot of games, man. It's a hell of a lot of games. Um, it's sad what is happening to Van der Beek. Our midfield two has to be Van der Beek in a world class CDM. Van der Beek's pass awareness and positioning is world class as a it Look, it, it is sad. It is sad what's happening with Van der Beek. I feel it's a bigger topic than tonight because I think we will win tonight anyway. Um, so I don't think you're going to get your whole. Oh, we should have picked Van der Beek. We, we'll win tonight, and but it is a bigger issue. And you know, I think the sad thing is that it, that we've all seen that he is a really good player. I mean. Real Madrid wanted him. He's a good player. He's not a potential that some people have spotted it and some people haven't. He is a good player. Uh, Lee Man United, thank Leo Man United. Thanks for the super chat. He says, uh, "What would it take for you to be Oli out?" Everything you've said lately says why Oli is not good enough. So why aren't you guys Oli out? I'll ask you that flex in a moment. I'm predicting five nil. Says Enzo. The front six can run a riot today. Hope so. Oli is an idiot, says Mark War. If there is one team that will know of Henderson's weaknesses, it's Sheffield United. How bloody stupid! But then again, he'll know. Everything about how they take penalties and shots as well. So, you know, that's maybe what Ollie will be thinking. Uh, just going back to that question, though, Flex, what would it take for you to be Ollie out? Because it's a good question. You know, there are yeah, people who are Ollie out. There's some people who well, are Ollie in. And I think, you know, yeah. everybody should be asked what it would be, what, what it would take for them to turn yeah. against the manager. I think, I think if, it's a, a, to, to, if we get to an untenable position, do you know what I mean? Where it's unrecoverable. I think right now, with where we're sitting in the league, you, you can't argue with numbers and where you factually are. Do you know what I mean? And listen, going out of the Champions League um, was a big blow. Um, was it a dis absolute disgrace? Difficult group. It was. It's, 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 it's a disgrace considering we only needed a point from two games and 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 flaffed it. But for me to, but that's not enough for me because the league position is still very good and we got that to fight for and the FA Cup etc. I think sacking him right now would just put us into a bit more chaos. Like if you're sitting there at the, at the table and Ollie's there and you're going, mate, you're sacked. He's going to go. Well, why? What? I'm, I'm technically in and amongst it. Yeah, not he's, technically. He's not it's factually, him. I am. You can't sack your manager when he's what are we? Five points off top with two games in hand. Is that what we are? No. Yeah, and also everybody who's Ollie out. If we, if the next manager came in and did really bad, they'd say, "Wow, we should have stuck with Ollie." You know, there well, are exactly. there are at least at the end of the season. There are some people who still say. Um, you know, because it's two years tomorrow that we sack Mourinho. There are still people who, who think we should we we shouldn't have sacked Jose. And I I like Jose, but I'm telling you, 100, percent we should have done. He, he had a long yeah. enough, and it was going wrong. You can't you can't just before Christmas, Mark. You can't be don't 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 look at the position ninth because if you don't take the context into that, you look at the position ninth, and then you're like flipping. You out. had six what, points on, don't you? You know exactly. You had six points on. So at the end of the day, it, look how tight it is. We're eight points off top. Um, I think he might have been in trouble different. if, you know, going on what I would say, I mean, look, look uh, Russian Nightmare says, listening to the playback, did someone really say that Oli does not have Sir Alex coaching DNA? My vote for 2020 st understatement of the year. Um, also, Zane says, Mark, what happened to your adopted team yesterday? Who's my adopted team? 
Spurs. Yeah, yeah, they lost, mate. I was, I was, I was disappointed with that late winner. But the, you, you, you can't underestimate the loss in the Champions League and say it doesn't matter. It's definitely a factor. I mean, it is definitely a factor. But this board have shown that it's the most important thing is actually league. I mean, Ole Gunnar, Jose Mourinho was still in the Champions League when we sacked him. Yeah. Um, because yeah, Oli Ollie went to Paris, didn't he? So, yeah. I think if Oli Gunnar Solskjaer had been where Arsenal are and knocked out the Champions League, he might have been in really big trouble. His league position at the moment is justifiably, to, in my opinion, the reason why he's in a job. Keeping him in a job, hundred percent. If Oli was, if Oli was fourteenth, or where Arsenal were, and then he'd just gone crashing out of Champions League, and only had fourteen points. You, you, you're right, we're in trouble. Yeah. You're looking at making a change there. But it's Christmas, and if he wins, I don't want to keep saying the game in hands, the game in hands, but now we literally have two, including tonight. Um, if he wins them, we're two points off top spot. So what? how can he do any more than that? You're two points behind Liverpool, mate, if you, if you do what you're supposed to do. You can't, you can't ask for more than that. How can you ask for more than that at Christmas? It's impossible. I, I think if he's... Um, sorry, Red Baron says, you say stats aren't the be-all and end-all, but looking at the points in the table and saying we should keep him, football isn't all about stats like you say, we play crap football. And uh, Daniel Luciano says, why does he have to make a choice? You can have opinions and not have to take a side. There'd be many reasons for both sides. Just saying, cheers, says Daniel Luciano. Arteta out, Allegri in, says Zane Yassi. I, you know, I'll answer the question and oh, say... I haven't seen Zane in a while. Where's he been? Jesus. No, he, he floats about a little bit. He goes around all different places. Where's the youth? Is that fair to ask this question? Says Rick out. And also, special Christmas pricing on fridges and hoovers from Man United's appliance shops. Come and get them, says Sean Finnerty. How do you genuinely think this season will end with or without Ollie? Says anything with Tom? Well, I can sort of, I was just going to answer my, answer the question anyway. Um, what would it take for me to be Ollie out? I think when top four's gone, that he's got to go then. Yeah. Because, yeah. That, and, but, and, that, but that might be, but that might be. Right, you know, top four might only be gone in like March. Then it's like, well, just let him see it out to the end. Yeah. What's the point? Yeah. You know, do you know what I mean? I so think that this season we're not going to get. I mean, look, if you think of the three managers they sacked, Van Hal was allowed to get to the end of the season, then he was sacked. Mourinho yeah. was sacked before Christmas, and Moyes was sacked in March when top four wasn't available anymore. And yeah. I think we're heading towards Moyes or Van Hal now with Oli. I don't think we're going to get an Oli sacking where a new manager no. could come in and. It has to go terribly wrong. It has, to, yeah. like I said, we have to be way adrift. Yeah. Five defeats on the bounce, no wins in whatever. Do you know what I mean? It, it has to do that. But when you look at the table, that doesn't reflect the feeling. And I'm not. This isn't us saying renew his contract because he's done enough to keep to get another two years. This is us saying, don't sack him now. Yeah, I, 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 I you know, God. Absolutely, I want Manchester United to stay in this title race yeah. for as long as possible. If we, if that's what we're calling it, I, I, I want us to win it. Of course, I do. Um, what I think is going to happen is, uh, you know, if it's going to go wrong for Oli, I think they will try to keep him in the job till May, which is why I don't really feel the need. And look, if you are Oli out, that's up to you. But I think you're in. You're going to be saying it for weeks and weeks and weeks and. I, I don't want to do that. I don't. I want to try and see the good in the situation, even if, even though in my heart, I don't think he's good enough. Um, I, that, that's yeah. just the way I choose to be. But to answer the question, I think when top four's gone, he's got to go. That That's for me it. You know, when top yeah. four's out of the question, he's got to go. Hold tight, Ashley Jenkins um, in the free seats. He says, Flex, are you really happy with the crap football? It's not necessarily like being happy with the crap football, Ashley. I see what you're saying because basically, we, I know, look, all the reasons why people are Oli out, I, I definitely hear the arguments and I agree with a lot of what they say. I'm just saying you can only go off the season and the table that you're in and the times that you're in. And with no fans right now, um, where we are in the league and factually where we are, I just I just feel that sacking them now, just I don't think it really does. not I don't, I don't think we need to do that. The players are inconsistent for many reasons. And I know it's down to tactical and coaching and stuff like that. But he's still getting a tune out of them in the league because the table shows it. You know what I mean, just because Liverpool and Man City have dropped off and not doing the superhuman numbers that they were putting up, well, then that means that for this season, we're in and amongst it. So how can we just can't argue with that? I just that's that's just my thing. It's not that I I like seeing boring games and stuff like that, but I just feel like he he deserves to keep going because he's in he's in there, he's in and amongst it. Do you know what I mean? So big up Ashley in the free seats. Hey, you know what? It's all about opinion. I absolutely, yeah, hundred percent. I totally understand anybody who's Ollie out. I do get it. I do get yeah. it. And I actually agree with a lot of the reasons why. But I just, 
I can't imagine any football club, maybe West Brom, um, that would sack a manager in this situation. Because look, you, you, yeah. you, you're totally right to say, well, look, he's not the right manager, so you sack him. I know he's not the right manager, so I'd sack him. I get that. I do get that. But on the other hand, win two games, win a game in hand, win tonight, you're two points off the top. Can you really sack a manager in that situation? Exactly I don't think that's ever right. Whether whether I think the football is good enough or not, you know, there's still something going right. You know, he didn't get backed in the summer and yet here he is two points off the top of the league. But then on the other hand, it's a shit league. Like Liverpool have dropped yeah. loads of points and they're still top. Um, Chelsea have spent hundreds of millions and they're, they're still losing games. So... The quality isn't that great. Once we get Allegri, Partey and Matanelli will be back. And don't forget Saka, says Zane. Won't matter though, mate, because even if you win every game, you'll still only finish about 10th. And uh, Martin says, it doesn't make sense to drop Pogba also considering how much we've invested on him. Dropping him would be pure self-sabotage. There you go. There's a different side of the coin there. So we're about five minutes out from kickoff flex. Um, you're obviously going to be back on at half time. What's your... Yeah. Uh, what do you think we're going to be talking about at half time? Do you think it's going to be? You said that we're 18th in the league. Um, if games ended at half time, do you think it's going to be a, another be. <laughs> frustrating first half performance where we turn it around in the second half? Or do you, you know, early goals very important in this game? Because that's I what think... I was going to say. Early goals very important. We could, because of our own um, fault and Sheffield United being very disciplined and, and structured and solid, be nil nil at half time and thinking we need to do more. We need to up the intensity. We're too slow on the ball. It could be. It could. If we're not careful, it could be one of them really boring halves. Because, um, and I mean in a bad way, not in like we're against the city. It's tight. It's cagey. We just need to do this. I mean, Sheffield United have shown no intent, and we've just stuck with the ball, and um, they they haven't had to come out of you know be, be making challenges or backs against the wall. We haven't had any shots on target, so that could happen if we're not at it. At the same time, as well, you got to be careful because. You know they are fighting for their lives, and teams that are fighting for their lives with with everything to lose are can be dangerous in moments. You've got to take that little bit of confidence away from them early doors by letting them know, flipping it, they're moving the ball so quick. We've got to run from left to right. We've got to keep going. They're peppering the goal. You've got to take that confidence away from them from within the first 15, 20 minutes. So, yeah, I, I think we'll be saying at half time. I think it'll be one nil at half time. Oh, I'd love that. Um... And also, I think on Sheffield United, um, it'd be interesting to know what their mindset is because I think, as even though they've only got one point, there's still plenty of points for them to play for. And um, I don't think they'll be, you know, it's not like they need a win. I think they'd be very happy with a draw tonight. Exactly. Um, they'd be over the moon with a draw because they can build on that. So I think you're going to see well-organised. Well, I'm not saying they will be well-organised. Their plan will be to be well-organised. If we get up the other end of the pitch, you know, let's try and do something with set pieces and stuff, but let's not overcommit. Let's keep ourselves organised with our back five. Uh, Maurice Frosler says, uh, Morning, Mark and Flex. Doing my first watch along on my way to work in the car this morning. Feels like a big game. Glory, glory, Man United. Thank you for the super chat there. Um, yeah, I think um, I, I think it's very important that we uh, just keep a high intensity in this game. And if it, if it starts to drop off with someone like a Matic, then you get a Fred on and, you know, if Greenwood's not having a good game, you get a Van der Beek on. There's, there's options on that bench and um, we just need to... Uh, I think the most, look, the most important thing is to win. But the big problem with this team that I see mentioned in the live comments a lot is that we never know how we play. We don't know what our philosophy is. And that's, that's why people don't believe we can actually do anything special this season. So hopefully, not only can we win, we can take a bit of um, you know confidence and pride in the result. And I tell you what, the game against Leeds, you know how that's going to go. It's going to be wide open. And, you know, so... Yeah, there's an opportunity there. Uh, exactly. Corey Lenica says, Ollie out, just not right now. Hard to argue with that. Happy holidays, lads, and the whole community. And jog on 2020. Thanks, mate. And I think that's about, you know, I think, you know, maybe, maybe Ollie out on hold for some of you because um, I can see us getting some good results. I really can. Um, yeah. Anything else you want to say before the start of the game, Flex? No, just flipping, don't United this up. Don't United this. Like, I don't even care how we win. I know people might moan if it's. One nil penalty or whatever, but I just I don't even want to get into that right now. We're going into the Christmas um, period, just flipping win the games, win the games, and there's no excuses tonight. It's picked an attacking team. There's enough people on there, enough players on there to be creating chances. Go and do it. Definitely right. Well, I'll get you back on at half time. Thanks for that, pal, and I'll speak to you in a bit. Yeah, cool. Uh, you can follow Flex on Twitter at FlexUTD. Uh, Robert McCormack says I've backed Martial to score tonight. Am I mad? Uh, no, I don't think you are. I hope he is going to score. I think we all want Anthony Martial to score tonight, don't we? Um, 
He's had a had a, had a bad start to the season. I'm not going to I'm not going to lie. That that would be a lie to say that he hasn't. And um, but we do want him to have a good one. Alpha Gaming says happy holidays, everyone. Happy holidays to you as well. I tell you what I do like about Amazon Prime is the stats by X-ray thing, where you can just click it and um, it uh, it um, gives you stats on the game, isn't it? I do like, you know, it is Amazon Prime. I don't need that in here. It is Amazon Prime tonight uh, for us, everybody who's watching in England. And um, that is... Um, that is different because it's not through a cable. It's a streaming way of watching football. And um, I, I do and don't like it, if I'm honest with you. I do and don't like it because I think that some aspects of it are good and some aspects of it are bad, um, i.e. you can get buffering and delays and things like that. But um, the stats and everything, that they, they do, they present it really well. I think they do present it really well. Uh, anyway, players are about to... Well, the players are on the pitch. We'll be good to go soon. Let me get the timer ready as well. My mum's a psychic. She said 1-0 to Sheff Sheffield United, says Joe Mix7. Of course, Harry Maguire used to play for Sheffield United. Some would say they wish he still did. But um, it's been progression for Harry. Captain Harry. Harry the Hoover. Um, more pays won it at the end, says Treasure. I've just remembered I will be under a lot of shit uh, stick if we, uh, if we don't... Um, if we don't win this, because I've been very confident. Michael Oliver is the referee. Please subscribe to the channel if you're new. Bottom right-hand corner to do that. We're trying to get up to uh, 924,000. Are you starting that starts for the WCC, says Robert McCormack. And we've done that one as well. Um, let me get back here. Bruno's going to take the kickoff. So it's always nice when we get to kickoff. Bada-bing, bada-boom. Players are going to take the knee, and then we're going to kick it off. Uh, I'd like Greenwood to grab a goal, says Emily Derry. Would do him the world of good. I think Greenwood, Martial, be nice to see them getting a goal tonight. Martial's probably a little bit more important. But let's also have a look at how we line up. We presume it's a 4-2-3-1. And um, I think it will be a 4-2-3-1. But um, will Martial go down the middle? And we're up and running. There you go. So... Do you think Man United is going to beat Sociedad, says James Jamie Vasquez. I couldn't give a shit, mate. That doesn't happen till February. A lot. I couldn't care what happens against Real Sociedad because we could be top of the league by then or we could be in 10th. But uh, Sheffield United are pressing up high up the pitch here from the off and Lindelof hits it down the line. Straight away, all my confidence, this is a peer. No, it doesn't really. It doesn't really. Um... Uh, Ollie Defo saw KG's impression of a conversation with Dino and just wanted to mug him off, says Joshua Bowater. And uh, why is the timer? I have started the timer. Oh. I haven't started the timer. Bollocks. We're going to be a minute behind on the timer now. Pratt. Absolute Pratt. Oh, oh, well done if you live in America. We're ahead of you. Look, this is why I don't like Amazon Prime, because there are streams all over the world that will be ahead of the UK, and it pisses me off when that happens. But my time is out anyway. It's about a minute out. There's no point in having the timer. It's uh, it's miles off, and I can't change the timer when we've started the game. It's really annoying. You should be able to... You should be able to... Annoying. I'm not going to let it bother me. There's a game of football to watch here. Uh, please subscribe if you do. Bottom right hand corner. I can't sort the timer out. I can't change the timer. It's a minute out. It's just the way it is. I might turn it off altogether in a minute. Sheffield United on the attack here anyway.
How can you have a timer where you can't change the bloody time? So irritating. Trying to sort this out when you're alive. I've got a plan. I've got a plan. Sheffield United on the attack. Corner. Oh, we don't want this. We don't want this. It's a corner to uh, them. I've got a plan now. Oh, no, that won't work. Corner to Sheffield United here. Let's watch, see what happens with the corner. Cross comes in, headed away and cleared by Tellez. I've got a plan. If there was a problem, yo, I'll solve it. Check out the hook. DJ revolves it. Ice, ice, baby. Bam, 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 bada, bam, bam. I've got a plan. I love it when a plan comes together. It's 1-0 to Sheffield United. I don't believe it. I do not believe it. I'm messing around with the timer, trying to sort it out, and it's 1-0 to Sheffield United. I wish I could go back in time. I do not believe Manchester United here. Lindelof gives it to Dean Henderson, who passes it to Maguire, who passes it to Henderson, who gets tackled and makes a right pig's ear of it. I mean, that is absolutely brilliant. It's brilliant, Halley. It's brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. You know what? I spoke to Dino, I spoke to Dino, and I penciled him in for this game. Bullshit. This is what happens when you start messing around with your team because you're picking your Nate, picking the team out of a bloody hat. Absolute prat, mate. Prat, mate. That is bloody jokes. There is no reason for Dean Henderson to start this game tonight other than Ollie picked his name out of a hat and thought, you know what? And this is true. This is bloody true. He said it before the game. He said it before the game. I penciled him in for this game. What a prat. This is high-end professional football and we're giving people a game to be nice. Like, that goal is completely on Dean Henderson and our crappy centre-backs again. Unbelievable. Absolute joke. About as useful as an inflatable dartboard, that defence. Crap. Centre-backs and keeper again. Miscommunication. I'm not joking. This isn't a rage to clip. This is a fucking fact. The reality is, I said this before the game. Go and clip that with flex. I said it before the game. That centre-backs, defenders, goalkeepers, this is why you don't change your goalkeeper a lot. Because you've got to change. You've got to, you've got to understand each other. You've got to you know, communicate. What happens... First two minutes, they don't know that they don't know how each other works. They're pissing about, and then Sheffield United go and score. That goal is on the manager. That goal is on the fact that we've bloody dropped a goalkeeper that we didn't need to drop today, and now we've miscommunicated in the first two minutes. A team that scored one five goals in once in, in in the season so far has bloody scored against us after two minutes. Absolute prats. We'll come back and win. Of course, we'll come back and win, but. This is the bloody problem. Jokers. Absolute bloody jokers. <sighs> this is something I didn't think I'd be doing today. Putting a bloody one in Sheffield United score. Magic. Magic. I said it. This is Ollie's fault. Why would you drop a De Gea in a league game? Rubbish, naive manager trying to be clever and it's come back to bite him. 
Uh, this game is on Sky Sports. Mark, I didn't know how to type the message on my last donation. Sorry, says Chalky. And uh, what is it about us that we're consistently inconsistent in our quality? Uh, so it's not on Sky Sports, mate, because it's on Amazon in the UK. And uh, thank you for the super chat from uh, Chalky there. Um, yeah, just, just, just absolute joke. Absolute joke. Can't believe it. Absolutely cannot believe it. The timer's broken. Like, if anybody asks anything about the timer again, I'm going to lose my shit. Like, can the moderators just block anybody who mentions timer? I've, I've verbally told you five times the timer is broken and I will fix it at half time. We're watching Manchester United play a game. I'm not Bill Gates pissing about trying to find the code to fix the timer. We're watching a game of football. We're eight minutes and a half in. Stop bloody acting like petulant children and just get on with it. Like, is it that important? We're losing 1-0. There's eight minutes 40 in and I'm highly pissed off. Bloody hell. It's um it's totally and utterly, utterly on Ali Gunnar Solskjaer. Absolutely. Don't care what anybody says. 100% on Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. When you swap your goalkeeper for a game of this magnitude and he, and he concedes straight away, we'll come back and win it. I've got no doubts we're going to come back and win this. But... <sighs> it's frustrating. Really frustrating start. Crazy. Absolutely, absolutely stunned. I'm stunned into silence here. The sound of silence. Ten minutes gone, one nil down. I'm going to look a right prat if we lose this. I think I've got a timer solution for you, everybody. There you go. Got a timer for you now. We can all stop having a moan. Things I have to do for you, even though I'm trying to watch a game of football. Uh, look, look, long night ahead, making Sheffield United look like a top four club, says Mark Dobby. Uh, are you sure, Mark, we're going to win this? Didn't say Ollie hold my beer while I go lose this match to the worst team in the league, says Bally. We'll still win. Can't hold the ball for two seconds against Sheffield United. Nice one. This is the future we want, ladies and gentlemen, says Sharath Math Fitness. And uh, also, imagine what people would be saying if De Gea did something like that. Some fans would be sending him uh, death threats. Absolutely embarrassing. Oh, yeah, but not Dino. Not Dino. No, no, not Dino. We, we can't criticise Dino. Dino's better than De Gea. That's the biggest cock-up we've, we've ever seen in it from a United game, uh, not United player this season. Jokes. Oli just doesn't go, have good manager's uh, uh, intention, says I, Iger S, and couldn't write it, says Kylo7.
Um, if we don't win, it's time for Oli to get sacked. Says Spencer Beatrice. We need a manager like Klopp who has a passion and love for football. Oli just sits there. Loser. You know, the worst thing about this is I think we will get a result, Spencer, but it absolutely the worst thing you can do against the team that was going to sit back and play for a draw anyway is give them something to hold on to. Like they know now if they don't concede twice, they, they get at least a point. Shambles, absolute bloody shambles. I can't believe it. You know, if, you, if, you, if you're new to the stream and you don't know what happened, uh, well, you, you, you do know what's happening anyway, because we're, uh, but if you don't know what happened, um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer basically came out before the game uh, and said that I picked, I picked Victor Lindelof. Um, no, not picked Victor Lindelof. I, I picked uh, Dino because I decided, it, I penciled him in for this game ages ago. So that's what our manager does. He pencils people in for games. Like penalties, it's, who, it's whoever feels good at the time. Make some bloody decisions. Who do you think's better, De Gea or Henderson, says Henry Barnes? Do I need to answer that question? I've always said De Gea anyway. We always concede when I go to play football. Leipzig last week, Sheffield today, says my United list. If, um, I feel sorry for Dean Henderson in a way, though, because have we won with a clean sheet this year, says Mark Witten. This should have been a clean sheet today. Nice ball in. Go on, Tony. Oh, keep us quick off his line. Ramsdale's going to have a bloody worldie tonight now. He was offside anyway. I don't think he actually was offside. What did you think about the goal anyway? I mean, I was that I was messing around with the bloody timer. I was like, you know, I thought, you know, we won't score in the first 10 minutes. Sheffield United won't score this year. And they go and bloody score. I mean, I haven't really had the time to compute what happened other than total and utter cock up. I mean, it started off with a free kick that De Gea had, uh, that Lindelof had in a very similar situation to this here. Passing about at the back. And Maguire gives it him back. And he, you know, just pissing about, arrogant. This is horrendous. Imagine a team like United making Sheffield look like Liverpool so far, says Sham Al Kamar. Uh, we have been in their box at all. We haven't been at all in their past box in 15 minutes. Let's keep Metal alive. They could be 2 0 up here. Just why? Where's the bloody defence? Matt Hayes, thanks for the super chat there. But. Um, Where's wan -Bissaka again? Where's wan -Bissaka again? He's bloody sucking in without Lindelof. He's out of position again. When are we going to bloody learn? Game after game. Lindelof sucking wan -Bissaka in. He's out of position again. Snakes and ladders football this is. Bloody up, up the ladder and down the snake. Bloody joke. Who comes on as centre-back if any of those two fridges gets injured, says Baloo Singh. At least David will have a boost of confidence as Thomas Mendenhall. They should be 2-0 up. I'm in a bloody laugh. They should be 2-0 up. I'm there on Tuesday night. Oh, straightforward win this is. Bullshit. Absolute joke. The, the ineptitude of these players knows no depth. Look at Wambasaka chewing his chewing gum, looking like he's good. You, mate, mark your bloody players. I would tell Aaron Wambasaka before every game, don't go within five metres of Lindelof and you'll have a good game. The goal was brutal, but McGoldrick obviously knows Maguire and Lindelof mess about with the ball too often and press just pass forward for once as Mark Witten. I, I, I do think the centre-backs were at fault for the goal as well. I mean, every, everyone's going to get Lindelof. Don't you shove bloody Bruno! <coughs> I don't like it when they shove Bruno. I'm angry. I'm angry tonight. I'm very angry. I need some water. Don't push Bruno. Go on, Rashi. 
Oh, Rashi! Over the bar. Should have been 1-1. Best thing that could happen to United is a long-term injury to Maguire. Look at the pass from Bruno again. Delightful ball by Bruno. Gets Rashford in. Might have been marginally offside. He's got, he's got to score that. He's got to score that. United not matching Sheffield United's energy and work rates as existence. Maguire gets worse every week. His positioning is a joke. What is he doing? All the back four had a sloppy start, says Nick M. I told you, Luke Shaw is our best defender. Without a doubt. I don't care whether Rashford was offside. He should still bloody score. We'll deal with VAR afterwards. That's part two. In football these days, you score a goal, then you go to part two. Uh, please subscribe if you're new. Bottom right-hand corner, we're trying to get up to 924,000. We're only 20 away. So bottom right-hand corner, please subscribe. From Vidic and Ferdinand to Harry Beckenbauer and Linda Flop, says Reddy HD. Harry the Hoover and Victor the fucking Vacuum, that's who they are. Shambles. Ricky must be fuming. Dan James would have never win at giving away a goal scoring opportunity like that. Screw the Glazers, says uh, Quanali. And uh, we might as well stick a back, uh, back hole on the centre of defence, says Emily Derry. Mohamed Idris says, hey, Mark, can't understand why Ollie dropped De Gea and not played Donny and Axel. Hope we can still win. Good enough lineup in the midfield and up top. Have a happy and safe Christmas. Sure, the goat. Thank you, Mohamed. Happy uh, Christmas to you as well. Uh, Luke Darling says, um, I'll come back to Luke Darling because Sean Negative Turner says, seven at the back in a must-win Champions League game, dropping your number one goalkeeper in the Prem randomly. He's got to go. Does Klopp drop Alisson for a laugh in the Premier League? Sean Negative Turner there. Missing Fred again. He's a vital part of the second team on the team sheet after Bruno. Lindelof is struggling here. And uh, he does well to get it back to the keeper. Um, and uh, Aidan McCrudden says, I don't want to sound stupid or cause trouble, but Maguire is slowly turning into Phil Jones. It's a horrible thought. It's a horrible thought. Why have we created such a hate agenda for Maguire people wishing him injury who created this agenda where you wish injury to our captain says Carb I don't think I've, I've not done it why is Maguire always vacating his position to winning the ball in midfield says Markey the bottom line is with Maguire and Lindelof it's a bit like two people who do not like each other they, 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 just, they instill no confidence in each other they are you know Phil Jones and Chris Smalling used to get called the Chuckle Brothers um, but these two, there's a name for them that we've not even established what it is yet. You know, they do not complement each other in any way. They never look confident with each other. Lindelof was not an issue before Maguire showed up. He was good with Smalling. So why are we trying to find a partner for Maguire? Says Mark Witten. Um, Hi, Mark. You missed my last donation, says Chalky. Sorry, mate. I don't get to do them all. Like, it's very busy in the Super Chat. I, I try and read them all, but I don't get to read them all. Ricky's point proven. We had nine players above the ball for the goal. Too offensive, says Philip. Too offensive. Too offensive. The goal, it's got nothing to do with Sheffield United attacking. It's got to do with those three prats at the back creating a goal for Sheffield United. They've scored five goals all season. They've got one point. What do you want to do? Play a back five against them. We've got to attack. Get Phil Jones back, says Bobby. Ricky's point, we've done that one. And why don't they, why don't they captain Bruno? They played really well versus PSG when he was the captain, says Cool. And crappy Maguire makes so many mistakes and Lindelof takes the brunt of it, says Quanali. Uh, kit has gone out for a goal kick. Uh, big man says, Ollie dropping our best defender, Shaw, our number one goalkeeper in good form at the moment when we concede a goal from a mistake from our backup goalkeeper in defence. Nowhere to be seen. Ollie is honestly a prat, says big man. Uh, Laurel and Hardy, says Simon. And Lindelof puts his body on the line every time. Maguire is uh, just like Ollie, hopes for the best. I mean, it's, I've just seen the goal back there. It's It's mainly on Dean Henderson, to be honest with you. And I'm telling you now, if De Gea makes that mistake, that's it. That that should be the end of the story now. Get De Gea back in for Leeds and never, never do this again. 
never. You know, I know Dean Henderson's a good goalkeeper. Go and be a good goalkeeper on loan. But you've had your chance at United now. You know, it's, this is a stress now that we didn't need. We didn't need this tonight. Didn't need to be putting ourselves into this situation tonight. You know, we've gifted them a 1-0 lead. No need for it. This would have been a perfect game for Van der Beek. And he uh, says, uh, says Alec Miller. Thank you. Low block with lots of possession. Ollie's really letting us down with team selection. Well, he, he, the, the good thing is he'll have to make changes. Lee Taylor, what was Hendo doing with the Hoovers? Does Rashford know how to stay on side? Uh, Greg Basham, I love Rashford, but why can't he even never make the easy play? Drives me crazy with the turnovers. Rarely makes the easy play. Uh, Jake Marshall Pratt how is it too offensive when he lost the ball in the six yard box can't believe what I hear sometimes Dean's fault we move on De Gea would get pelters says Jake Marshall and Mohamed Alkush says if Phil Jones cost 80 million he'd be called Harry Maguire <laughs> I, I mean to be fair look I don't rate Victor Lindelof and I don't rate Harry Maguire but the goal is yeah we're pissing about at the back that's that's not good but it really is a goalkeeping error the, what's more concerning is we're 25 minutes into this game and we're playing absolutely terrible. Why can't we keep the ball, says Sharath Kamath Fitness? Exactly. Exactly. Uh, why are we looking so shaky, says Jamie? Funny to see um, Funny to see how the British press will, who the British press will play for this, uh, blame for this, says Kanishka. And Maguire needs to be slated for that goal. Defender on the second needs to get clear if under pressure, says Al Prolum. I need to see it again. The only re I didn't really see it much when it happened, and I've I've seen the mistake by Henderson. But yeah, the captain of the team needs to take responsibility. We've got to win this game, you know. We've got to win this game. Nice ball into Rashford. Boom! One one. One one. Manchester United. Rashley levels it up. Let's get going. Let's get moving. Marcus Rashford, he lo he's looking a bit sharp today. I don't know who hits the ball, who hits the ball over the top. I think it might be, uh, I think it's Lindelof. Yeah, well, Rashford's not offside. Lindelof with the ball through. Lovely goal by Marcus Rashford, that is. Lovely ball by Lindelof over the top. Rashford, oh, it's a love. what a goal. What a finish by Marcus Rashford. Right, let's get going. Let's go. Shut up the haters. Uh, score one properties. One. Dang, dang, dang. Mate, there's more, there's more than a Man United win on this. I've said we'd win this game easy. We've got to win it. <clears throat> I've got a bit of a cough now because I'm sticking up for Bruno. I've got a really tickly cough. Cough. Someone's just told me to sit down. Uh, I support Man United and want us to win, you twat. Um, Kim, Kimi Raikkonen could better do better defending than Harry, says Ready HD. And uh, Lindelof makes those long passes a lot. Just for that, I'd take him over Maguire, says Terence Stewart. And told you Lindelof is the good player. Maguire is terrible, says Markey. One one twenty six minute. I take my comment back about Rashford not knowing how to stay on side. Says Lee Taylor. Right, you know Rashford's a fantastic player. Um, he does do it. He does do frustrating things, but he can also score amazing goals. Like that's you don't you don't mind that in a striker. You don't mind that in an attacker. Um, Harry and the Ice Man are the plank and the puddle. Says DRJ zero four. The frustrating thing is we know we can beat teams, but we're always going to be a problem. When, you know, great teams can't be great teams when they've always got to come from behind. We've had to come from behind again because of crap defending. This is a problem. This is why we need to buy a centre-back in the summer. We don't need to buy a goalkeeper. We've got David De Gea. We've made a mistake tonight. Ollie's been... Ollie's tried to be everyone's friend tonight. What a takedown by Rashford, that is. That first touch by Rashford, I'm telling you now, Mata does that and everyone like he's a magician. The takedown is absolutely brilliant by Rashford. Fantastic goal. We're well proud of that, Marcus. Fantastic goal. But, um... Yeah, we, we, we need to buy a centre-back in January because we're not going to win anything with those centre-backs. They're a pair of prats. They are a pair of prats at, at, at the back as a pairing. 
I think Lindelof would be better without Maguire, and Maguire would be better off without Lindelof. As a pair, they're, they're, they're really poor. But we, we cannot keep going behind in games. Every game we're going behind and having to come from behind with a kick up the arse. Fortunately, this is a bit like nil-nil after half an hour now. We've got over it. What a first touch, says Nazar from Rashford. Absolutely fantastic. I bet Ollie is the type of uh, person that changes oil in his engine twice a week, says Big Dickens. And unsure why it's always Maguire is crap, Lindelof is crap. They're both good players. They just don't complement each other. State of some fans, says Steve MUFC. But yeah, I, I, you know, it's about, for me, Steve, it's about getting a centre-back who's got some pace, which lets us, lets us allow us to play higher up the ground, higher up the, up the pitch, which prevents us having to play two holding midfielders, which prevents us having to have two centre but two full-backs tucking in. I mean, look, 1-0 to Sheffield United. It should have been 2-0. Wan-Bissaka sucked into Lindelof again, and they get a shot. So... Man United's big problem is the defence. And, and look, Sheffield United, I think we'll go on and win this game now. And we should have won this game from minute one. It's, it's an easy three points, really. But Leeds will be different. And Leicester will be different. You know, our defence is vulnerable. Lee Taylor says, Mark, just realised this is Ollie's tactics. He tells the players to go down a goal early, then go win the game to make it look like he has a plan B. <laughs> and um, Pau Torres or Ruben Nevers, team sorted, says Robbio FM. But they've got they've had another chance here, Sheffield United. They're uh, they're actually attacking more than I thought. And the cross there, the positioning of Tellez again is poor because he's been sucked into Maguire. Why do our fullbacks suck in? That could have been a goal for them then. Tellez leaving his man on the back post. Wan Bissaka always does it, tucking in to protect the centre backs all the time. Uh, Lindelof's always got a deadly ball in him, says Mayer, and changed the game in a heartbeat. Seen it multiple times. I'm almost convinced that he's a CDM. Interesting from Mayer. Here's Bruno. Nice little dink into Martial. Takes it down. Oh, good defensive bit by there. Could have been a goal. Could have been a goal. Lovely ball by Bruno. We've, we've already seen some great balls from Bruno. I think Matic and Pogba need to steady the ship a little bit. That might have been given as a handball against Tony, but uh, defender makes a good block. Uh, how does Maguire always get away hugging players, says the jaw dat. Please subscribe if you're new, by the way. Bottom right-hand corner. Half an hour gone in this one. <clears throat> Stretch your back, Mark. Thanks, says pa thanks, Patrick. Cross comes in. Cleared away. God, stressful start to the game again. Just got to get the win. We're already into that group again, aren't we? We've just got to get the win. You know, I wanted a 3-0. I wanted a good performance. And now, as the same as Southampton, the same as West Ham, now it's just, can we get the win and get out of dodge? Problem seems to be that Aaron Wambasaka gets sucked into Lindelof because when Lindelof gets sucked into Maguire and vice versa, it seems like tactics to me. Oh, it's Beto. It is tactics. They're definitely being told to do this. It's and it's you know what it's stupid because there's no benefit of of, of playing narrow fullbacks. There isn't one. It, it, how is it benefiting us? We're still conceding shitty goals. Why don't we play like every other back four and actually have your right back covering the back post and your left back covering their back post? Uh, both Pogba and Matic have had a bit of a quiet game so far, but remember they're midfielders. They're not uh, they're not there to be attacking. Rashford falls over the ball, which is a shame. Lindelof, Lindelof isn't all bad. Maguire isn't a captain. I'd go Lindelof and Shaw until a centre-back can be brought in. Twan Sebi could cover if Tellez is out, says Warren Cook. A nice switch of the play there by Pogba. Uh, Greenwood's been a bit quiet, yeah. Not really got him on the ball enough. Nice little ball into Martial. Martial! 2-1! Bada bing, bada boom! Here we go! Get off! I told ya! I told ya! Don't worry, I'm not stripping. Anthony Martial! Boom! 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 I tell you what, Alexa! 
Play Sit Down by James. Oh, sit down. Martial Hitters. Martial Hitters. Shit, shit down. Sit down. Get in. Absolutely fantastic. Who gets the assist on that? Martial. That's what we needed. That's what we needed. I'll take mistakes from Henderson in the back lot. Little bit of luck from Martial. But that's what you need when you're having a goal drought. Get in the bloody back of the net. Get in. We need that. We need that goal from Martial. We need that goal tonight. So happy for him. Sit down. I told you. He's not He's not finished. He was just having a bad run. Just having a bad run. Lovely assist by Pogba as well. I didn't even get to see that. Pog boom. Let's go. Get in. Says uh, Saya. But it's 2-1 Manchester United. And it's Martial with the goal. And I tell you what. Whoever said last night on the preview. Goldbridge you need to bring back the t-shirts. You're right. Goldbridge gets the Martial t-shirt on. Martial scores after a goal drought. I think the last time I won it. The last time I won it. Oh, Rashford nearly makes it three. We're on fire at the moment, United. Some lovely balls being played by Pogba and, uh, and uh, Bruno as well. Sheffield United, that ball in behind with the pace of Martial, the pace of Rashford. We don't have the movement in the box today from Cavani, but we do have that pace around. And that's why that's why I like Pogba playing from deep, because people say, oh, he's a, he's a cam, he's a cam. Paul Pogba from deep can play those balls into Rashford and Martial, and it's that transition. You can't play that ball when you're a cam. So really, really important from Pogba in that position. Lovely play by Martial here. This would have been a great goal. Would have been another. Would have been an assist for Martial. Absolutely fantastic. So we've turned this round. Thank God for that. After the shambles of a start that we had, we have turned this around and we're two one up. Ten minutes to half time. I told you, Fleck, it's Marshall. Check my tweets out. I said Martial was going to score today. That's why I've got the bloody t-shirt on. Um, Carlos says, these people need to shut up about Dean. One second, everyone is pleading Ollie to replace De Gea. Now they're saying Ollie should have never replaced him. Mate, I always said, don't take De Gea out of goal. So, But it's history. You know, don't do it again. Le Ollie, you know, I don't even... Dean Henderson's made a big mistake. Maguire and Lindelof are a pair of prats. Like, they cause loads of problems. But the reality is, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's made that. You know, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has caused that problem. He needs to bloody get, grow a pair, get get onto Manscaped, shave off the hair, find a pair of balls, and just make decisions where you're going to make people unhappy. Because that's management. You can't make everybody happy. And I think Solskjaer's trying to make everybody happy. Oh, Dino, Dino needs a game. I penciled him in for this. This is a Premier League game. It's a Premier League game of football. You, you've got to go with your strongest team as much as possible. I think, look, you've rested McTominay and Fred, but you can trust Matic and, uh, and, uh, and um, Pogba. But changing your goalkeeper has a massive risk of communication issues. And there was a communication issue. Rashi, Rashi should have squared it to Mason. You could say it's good management as it's the game for Henderson to get away with a mistake. If he makes one anyway, got my Martial bet up, says Robert McCormack. You know, to be honest, Robert, you're right. I think him. I think McC I think uh, Henderson making a mistake in this game is um, is not going to cost us. But I, he should have got a clean sheet tonight. That smile that Martial has after he scored is not a happy smile. It's a smile of relief. So happy for him, says Elliot Holmstrom. Look, I said this so many times. We live in a world. We live in a world in football whereby, um, y you know. Everyone follows Ronaldo and Messi and they're so good we, every week that when a player has three or four bad games, they're suddenly shit. But I'm telling you now, normal footballers go through bad patches. I remember Alan Shearer doing it. I remember Andy Cole doing it. I remember Van Nisseroy doing it. You know, strikers have a go through a bad patch and Martial has been through a bad patch. But it's not as long as you think because he's actually been injured. He also had a ban. So it's been a three or four month bad patch, but he hasn't actually played that three or four months. But that goal is so important for Anthony Martial. And, and you know, he, 
I think he would he wouldn't have cared if he'd fell over and it had gone in off his arse. It's still an Anthony Martial goal and and it gives him confidence and confidence is so important. Mark, sing us the Gillette song. <laughs> Who's on the bench, says Mark Witten. Matter, Dan James, Van der Beek, McTominay, Fred, Luke Shaw, and uh De Gea. Divas says Martial got lucky. Good! Not bothered. Don't care. I'm just going to have to watch this back myself. What a prat. What a prat. Um, unbelievable what a goal can do for a player, says Jack Conroy. Exactly, exactly. <sighs> Lucky comeback. Again, what will it take for Oli to start to Ansebi, says B2. And that ball by Pogba, unbelievable. So happy for Anto, says Brad Hour. You know what? It was a fantastic ball by Pogba. That's why I like him playing deep. But also, Bruno's played about three of those passes already as well. The, the the great thing about having Pogba and Bruno in the team, in their midfield positions, is you've got two players who can play those balls. And it's such an asset for United. Um, we get so many opportunities. First sub will be McTominay, I'm calling it, says Edgar. Uh, the Ricky gang is on the bench, says Beto. Lindelof played so good with Twan Serbi against PSG. With Bruno as captain, we should play them often, says Rajas. They've responded well. Man United have responded well to being, you know, 1-0 down. The problem we're going to have, and if anybody talks about um, winning titles, the problem we're going to have is we're not going to win a title. We're not going to win a title with that back four. Because you make that mistake against Liverpool, you're out of the game. We're making mistakes against teams like West Ham and, Sh and Southampton and Sheffield United. And we're good enough to come back. But you make these mistakes like we did against Spurs. You lose the game 6-1. He's got to sort his defence out. You can't come into games giving people a bloody game because they're your mate or anything like that. You've got to be bare. Uh, Shaw is so underrated. He does so much for our defence as Thomas Mendenhall. It's nice to hear that. I think, I think Luke Shaw has been our best defender for a long time now. Mark, can I get a shout out, please? Says Barney. You can. There you go. I wonder what place we would be in if Pogba had played like this all year, says uh, Land48. Probably about the same place because we'd still be making mistake mistakes at the back, mate. Uh, Cavani's not on the bench because he's not quite fit, Ben's K. <laughs> Daniel Fisher says we need to park the bus now. Well, we're three minutes out from half time. Sheffield United on the attack here. Tellez will get rid of that. Need to work hard. Lindelof and Pogba with the assists. Yep. Please subscribe if you're new, by the way. We're really close to uh, 923,000. 24,000. Bottom right-hand corner to subscribe. Just had a tweet, a message from Drawty saying that first touch by Rashford was very, very good. It was absolutely brilliant. It was absolutely brilliant. Is Bruno our Van Dijk? Signed in January and we win the cup the season after. Also don't understand why we do Tiki Taka at the back, says Sheehan. Yeah, they're not players to do that, are they really? How many mistakes before we realise they aren't mistakes? Oh, watch out. Sheffield United about. Good shot. Front post goes for a corner. 
Uh, that's just their standard of football. Players make mistakes, but not the same ones each game, says Jake Martial. I mean, look, the defensive... We could probably do with a really good defensive coach. Have we got one? You know, nobody ever talks about that. It's not Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's job to teach the defence what to do. Maybe we don't have a good defensive coach. Uh, Maguire is the main problem in the back, says Gürtchen. Well, he shouldn't be the problem, should he? Because he's the captain of the team. Patrick, I've stood up and stretched my back a few times. Thank you. Couple of minutes out till half time here. Cross comes in. Sheffield United, it's a bad one. We'll get rid of that. I'd take I'd take full time now. I mean, I, hopefully in the second half we'll score a few more goals, but I would take full time now. Mourinho plus Maguire equals world class defence, says Henrik Rabu Nielsen. And are you sure Aaron Wambasaka plays right back? He's never there, says Robert McCormack. He's always tucking in. Always tucking in. Why does Flex not get into the press conferences anymore? I remember he used to be able to get into them and ask questions a year back, says Ethan. Yeah, Europa League games, mate. It's different for the Premier League. Access is different. Uh, thanks for joining the Members Club, Joe Bates. You can do that by clicking the Join button. And Mark, I love your watch-alongs from Prague. Can you say my friend, Rayo, is a prat, says Philip Santa. Rayo, your mate says you're a prat. Um, Ibrahim says, will Ollie get sacked? What, when he's winning? No. I don't feel this game is over, you know. Sheffield United have got a lot of energy. We need the third goal just to deflate them. I mean, we shouldn't be we shouldn't be conceding one goal to this lot. Welcome to the members club, Lee Cook. Thanks for joining. We should not be conceding one goal to this lot, but we have. That's that's just the way it is. Thoughts on the first half? Well, we'll be talking about that in a minute. We're nearly at half time. Two minutes added on here. <sighs> Positives. I think Bruno and Pogba, when they're on the ball, have made some really good passes. Um, Rashford and Martial have looked lively. Greenwood's been a bit quiet. Get Rui Farrier as defence coach, says Cavill. I think Greenwood's been a little bit quiet. Uh, probably not got him on the ball as much as I would like. Uh, Matic, jury's a bit out on Matic, but um, fullbacks are, look susceptible again because they're tucking in. This team is split in half. Relegation battling defence and a title challenging attack. We must tr strengthen in January, says Danny Noon. What a comment. I think you're absolutely correct there. Um, Lindelof there. Still a minute to go here. Bruno's took a knock. I think I think he's all right. Very concerned about how many 50-50s we lose. We never seem up for the fight physically, especially when we don't play Fred or Donny, says Stuart Betts. And what's the best pub in Manchester, says Land48. I don't know. I don't live there, mate. And they're all shut at the moment anyway, so none of them at the moment. But we're still doing that thing as well, aren't we? Where Maguire is the spare man for the high ball. And the, the timer will be fixed at half time. We've had a problem with the timer. I've had to go back to the old one, which is shit. But the new one's fine. I just can't... If I, if I don't start it at the right time, it's a problem. So we'll be talking about that. And uh, that is half time, I think. So it is half time. And it is 2-1 to Manchester United at half time. And a tale of two halves. You know, I'm sure... I'm sure uh, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer will be there saying, Dino, don't worry, Dino. It's fine, Dino. But it's not fine, Dino. It's a bloody crap mistake. And it's cost us, um, it's cost us big time in the sense that we went 1-0 down. Having said that, we've, uh, we've got ourselves back in it. And uh, we should now be good enough to go and take the three points. That's the main thing. But um, yeah, look, the reality is we're 2-1 we're up and we need to now take the win. Uh, we've got something, you know, we're in front. Let's 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 get the result. Um, but look, you know, the goal from Rashford is absolutely superb. 
the ball from Lindelof is very, very good. Nice ball over the top. And uh, he uh, he does the business, of course, um, as we've seen him do before. And um, really, really pleased for Anthony Martial to get a goal as well. Let me just uh, stop, reset, start, reset, stop. Okay, we've got the timer ready for the second half now. That problem is over. So, yeah, um, it's... It's, it's just frustrating, isn't it? You know, you want to see a Manchester United performance that's that's absolutely, you know, blows Sheffield United away. But on 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 the half that we've just seen, if I'm absolutely honest, that's a game of football where quality has us two one in front, not ability. And the quality and ability are not the same because it's individual talent, isn't it, that's got us back in that game. If you watch that game, you would just basically say Sheffield United haven't got the players that Man United have got. But tactically, they've given as good as they've got. It's just the quality of the finish from Rashford, the ball from Pogba to Martial. That's been the difference because Sheffield United have had the chances that we've had. Mark, you go on about the centre-backs all the time. Other centre-backs are injury-prone and owners fed up buying a new one every other season. What is Ollie to do, says Darren Turner? I don't think you can say their injury record is why we have to play crap centre-backs. The first half was very weird, in my opinion. Sheffield play high line and we're not ready for that. They press and it's really weird, says Rasmus. And can we get a rematch between AFTV and the United Stands of Spencer Beatrice? Not the time for that. Thank you very much. And um, we're being outplayed by Sheffield. Individual brilliance saved us again, says David Bennett. It has been a bit of a weird half. It has been a bit of a weird half. Please subscribe if you're new, by the way. Bottom right-hand corner. We're really close to 924,000. So please subscribe. Bottom right-hand corner. Assists for Lindelof and assists for Pogba. But the goals for Rashford and the goals for Martial. The Martial goal is more important than the Rashford goal. The Rashford goal is better than the Martial goal. But the goal from uh, Martial is fantastic because it just gives him that confidence. But apart from that, Rashford nearly got another one. Lovely ball, lovely run by Martial. Would have been a very good assist. Um, but other than that, I think it's been quite an equal half. Obviously, the mistake at the start. It's funny. I'm about to get Flex on now. Uh, Flex, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, man. I was just about to say, talk, let's start. Let's Well, give us your thoughts on that half. But we have to start off with that goal. And it was you who, at the start of the game, told us why Oli was picking um, Dean Henderson today. Um, and yeah. God did that backfire. And we were actually talking about this. You know, you change your goalkeeper. Doesn't matter whether he's a good goalkeeper. That defence is used to playing with De Gea. You bring De Gea in. You bring Henderson in. And we concede a goal because of miscommunication between the centre-backs and the, and the goalkeeper. Yeah, and the worst thing is, it's not even something that is over the expectation of a centre-half to expect the goalie to deal with with that. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, you can argue that he, he shouldn't have passed it there, just booted it up the field, but... There's no, there's no pressure on at, at that time whatsoever. Henderson just takes an awful touch, doesn't know what he wants to do with it, um, and gets robbed. Do you know what I mean? It's, it was pathetic. And to hear, that's what I said, to hear that Oli was dishing out the appearances like sweets for Bance, basically, I, I penciled it in. Like, I'm just, it, it, it's always going to go against you if you say something like that, and then that happens. Do you know what I mean? It goes against you, first of all, just before the game, because you're like, really? Don't really like that, but cool, we'll, we'll, we move. But um, then to concede like that was an absolute joke. And you know what? It could have been two. John yeah. Fleck, he, he had a good strike as well. So we one we're kind of on the ropes there. One Basaka out position. It was the same situation. Exactly that. Tucked in too deep. I'm um, sorry, too too narrow. Not not covering his right hand side. Um, and it was nervy at, the, at that first 15, 20 minutes because I tell you what, you give a team with who's absolutely struggling something to hold on to. Their work rate was good in the first five minutes. They were pressing us. They were onto us, to be fair. They didn't just sit back. Um, it, it, was, it was a dangerous thing. But what you could see, though, was a couple of times we tried to play Martial in offside, Rashford yeah. offside. Bruno and you could see that ball on toast, haven't they, really? Yeah, you could just see, which from their point of view shows why they are um, where they are in the league. Do you know what I mean? Um, and, a bit, and, and the individual brilliance did kind of show through. But you give Paul Pogba, he's having a field day. He's got acres around him. He's got time to touch, turn. That's his best position his for me. Foot. You know, yeah, Pogba yeah. FC but say he's a cam. Time, I've seen Pogba have space and time before and, and make bad bad decisions. Sorry, not have space and time. And then you don't see the same Paul Pogba. I think in a game like this, though, all we could talk about is this. You've got to give him his props. And this mm -hmm. is what we're saying. After everything that's happened, it is what it is. When he crosses the right line, we want him to play well. And and we, we had a feeling he'd play well. And he is in second gear. He's taken a... He's taking the mick tonight. He's having a good time. Rashford's, it's just, you just have to have to have the willingness to run. As long as Martial and Rashford keep having the willingness to run in behind, 
um, and keep making um, first and second round runs, um, we should be able to go and close this game out because there are still warning signs there, man. Ollie strikes me as someone who stops at the traffic lights on Grand Theft Auto, says Martin Limo. Um, I really think Luke Shaw is our Van Dyke. Uh, both English good communications. I think their qualities complement each other. Um, mm. And um, Dipan says something's gone wrong with Greenwood not making runs anymore. Yeah, Greenwood's been a little, little, little bit quiet. Today. A little yeah. bit quiet, but um, it'd be nice if he could get a goal. But look, Martial got his goal. Rashford's takedown was good. Um, really important we score those goals because I think if we get to half time one nil down, which could have happened, then you know we're in we're in trouble. I think fatigue will dismantle Sheffield second half. Effort levels ridiculous. First fifteen to twenty minutes, and it will take its toll. Yeah, we need to get. You know, for me now, it's about getting the win. And, and what I would say is though, because I think you've got to cater for for everybody here. It doesn't at the moment. If we go and win this game four one. There'll still be doubts about Solskjaer, won't there? Because the the goalkeeping decision is 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 amateur, um, and again we've had to come from behind again. And and defensively we do we do still look shaky. And I think that I said this. I don't know what your thoughts were actually. I said, look, against Sheffield United, even West Ham and Southampton, you go one nil down, you go two nil down, you 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 can get back into it. But when we made these mistakes against Spurs, all right, Martial had been sent off, but they punished us. And I think that. We're in it. We are in it. People say you're in a tight race, this, that, and the other. But the reason people are still very uh, suspect about this team, this defense, and our title credentials is for reasons like that. Again, today we're continuing. Look, I'm not, I'm not even talking about the goal. It's the chance you mentioned. Wan Bissaka's tucked in again. There was another cross where Tellez loses his man on the back four, back post from yeah, a cross. Yeah. The fullbacks keep tucking in. Not if, dominant man. I don't need to be a coach. I'm like Man United's fullbacks tuck in exploit the back post whether it's crosses yeah. or whatever find yourself some space on the back post and at some point you'll get a really good chance and that's tactical and de the defense is the problem and somebody said it in the in the watcher in, in the first half and they're right united's problem is from the we've got an attack that can win a title but we've got a defense that could get you relegated and that's that's why at the moment our form is so con inconsistent and it and it you know, every game's a journey. You know, you, you're losing, it's terrible, you, then you come back and win. Yeah, um, big up Neil Fish in the free seat. Says, Flex's fence is better than our defence. <laughs> big up Neil Fish for that. I should hit you with a fish for that, you cheeky sod. Um, I tell you what, I, I will say that it's not rocket science. Like, when you know how to defend properly, you are taught as a fullback to tuck in when the ball's on the other side of the pitch. There's no problem in doing that. But you're not taught to hold the centre-back's hand. Like what, what's happening is whenever that happens, and it always is one Basaka side, and Tellers was guilty of it once as well, but it's, we talk about Basaka because it, he has he does it most often. When the ball is on the is on our left hand side, or the the, the attacking team's on right hand side has the ball, one Basaka's tucking in way too much, like way too much. Um and then you, you took you then you look into Greenwood to maybe come in and help fill out, but he's got a, a left back going back the other way or or a left winger. So they both got to do their jobs. And I just think one Bissaka is vacating that space too much. And he's, you call it half and half. Can you see the man? Can you see the ball? It's, it's basics. It's really basics. You know, side on angle. Can you see both sides? Open out your, open out your body position so you can see both. Don't tuck so far up Lindelof's ass that you can't get out of it to get back out to the wing and it's too late. That's what we're doing. It's just doing it. He's just tucking in too much. Uh, Shake says, um, let me just read these super chats. Um, Shake says, let's not hate on Dean. He's a young lad, hardly plays after a long time. Pogba's outshined. Bruno and Victor has been trying that a long time now. Pogba, I don't think Pogba's out. See, why do people always have to do this? Why what, does what's Pogba, he saying? Pogba has one pass and he's outshining Bruno. It's this bullshit <laughs> that doesn't belong in the fan base. Piss Bruno put off. it on a plate for Martial as well. Well, when when Pogba goes in the summer, can you piss off with him, please? I'm, I'm bored of this bullshit. Pogba's outshining Bruno. Basically, what happened is Bruno played two passes over the back four that was as good as Pogba's. But Rashford and Martial were offside. It's a great ball by Pogba. We, we look a great team with Pogba and Bruno in it. Why does it always have to be about oh, this player? Martial scores his goal. <laughs> Martial scores his goal. Lucky. He's lucky. Are, are you actually Man United fans that you are now criticising the look of a Man United striker for scoring a goal? Bullshit. Like, you're not United fans. Face it. Whenever they leave, piss off with them. Because I'm, I, I can't be arsed with this bullshit anymore. I want Manchester United to win. I want all our players to do well when they're playing well. I want Harry Maguire to be the best centre-back in the world. Never going to happen, but I do want it. Um, 
Why won't Ollie realise that the common denominator in every bad centre-back pairing thus far has been Maguire, says Sean Donoghue. Greenwood tracking back hurts him. Not enough pace to pass defenders nor the skills. I think he's a striker, Red Devil 7 year at. Matic was shouting at Maguire to go wider before Henderson passed to him instead of going out to tell as he passed back to Henderson. I think Ollie knows Lindelof is better than Maguire, says Kovshin. I mean, look, on, on the Henderson thing, um, I do feel sorry for him. I, I do feel sorry for him. He shouldn't be playing. And I think before the game, he was very focal flex and he was la, la, la. I think he was, you know what it is? You get an opportunity, you back yourself because you've got to be confident. And it's like, you almost start, you almost try and do too much. And I think maybe Henderson was a bit hyped and eager and ready. And then you go and overthink a, something that if you're playing every week, it probably boots that yeah. clear first time. Yeah, exactly. But it's the first look, couple of minutes. I'm confident. Exactly. I'm going to take an extra touch. Stakes are high, stakes are high, and this this is what it is. This is what also happens as well, which is why we talk about how important the goalkeeping position is. This is what happens in that position when you're not ready. Do you know what I mean? You're not playing consistent games. You make silly little mistakes like that. It's on Ollie, not... really, isn't it? It's on Ali, yeah, it's on Ollie and it's on Maguire because Maguire should I, shouldn't give it him back, really. Yeah, yeah, I suppose because he hasn't really got much else to do apart from. But if he just, at the end of the day, though, professional level football, man, come on, elite level football. Henderson, you, you can't be, you can't. That's why you need a left, right, left, left foot, it's left centre back as well. Yeah, yeah, because then he would have, then he would have gotten, been, been able to play out from his left, hundred percent. Also, as well, though, to be fair to Dean Henderson, a um, couple of important saves, saves he should make at the near post. I understand that, but especially that second save he made, that was very close to going underneath his leg, through his legs. That one from a goal drip. Um, so you know they're routine saves at his near post. You expect him to do it, it but matter now, though, he managed to, he managed to clear his head and yeah and make a couple of good saves. No, no, it's good for him, but it won't matter now because you know he ain't going to play on Sunday, is he? That chance no. is gone. Lindelof uh, is uh, slid across too far, facing Wambasaka over to cover the empty man. Says Christopher Hines, and our fullbacks keep playing out of position, and our CDMs need to cover for them. We need to fix that, says Nick Lee. Nick Nick Lee, and. Um, also, uh, individually, our back line are talented as a unit. They, they were a mess, says Sean Finity. That must come down to coaching. And uh, Mark, I think we've been seeing it uh, a wrong way, playing crosses from all directions. Demand to run is too much. We need Pogba for those long balls, says Aravin. Look, I was very disappointed with Paul Pogba and his agent last week. Not, you know, if I didn't care about the player, I wouldn't have been so disappointed. It's because he's a good player. I want him to play well for United. I want him to stay at United. Uh, that's, you know, that's why it hurts so much. But, um, I um, I think that uh, players are coming out now. But look, for me, Pogba's best position as somebody who likes Pogba is exactly where he's playing today. He's um, yeah, he, he, exactly. He's so his passing range, and you've seen it there. But there are there are Pogba FC people out there who thinks he's a cam. I don't get it. Like you're taking away half of his game by doing that. Will yeah. Woodward back Oli in January for top two? We'll have to wait and see. There, God. But what's going to happen in the second half, Lex? Uh I'd like to think that we go on and get that third goal. Um, hopefully, quite quickly, actually, kill the game. I think once you get that third goal, you kill the game. The longer it goes at two-one, you just give them that fighting chance of a of a set piece, or you do something daft and make a mistake, and like we did for their goal. Um, and they are looking quite threatening, and they're going to be willing runners. Once it's two, as long as it's two-one, they're going to be willing to chase things and, and force mistakes and make it make it difficult. So I think get that second goal early on, or as early as possible, and kill the game. Okay, well, Flex is going to be live with KG on the fan forum after my match reaction later. We'll look forward to that, mate, and hopefully yes. it will be a win. Cool, cool, cool. Nice one. Speak to you in a bit, pal. You can follow Flex on Twitter at FlexUTD. Uh, we're about to kick off in the second half. Ollie's looking very relaxed. A lot of people in the live comments are talking about Maguire, saying that it was his fault. Um, Romero never let us down. Look, I, you know, Dean Henderson's a really good goalkeeper. He's a really good goalkeeper, and he's made a bad mistake there. He's, it's his chance. I think he's overhyped. Um, I think he's probably taken a touch more than he wanted to. He's feeling confident. You know, everything you hear about Dean Henderson, he's a very confident goalkeeper. Um, he wants to make an impression and, and that can be dangerous at times because, you know, it's all fine margins, which Ollie talks about. He's made a mistake. He doesn't need it holding against him. But the reality is, who picked him tonight? We know Ole Gunnar Solskjaer picked him because he penciled him in ages ago. In a Premier League game where you need three points, he penciled him in ages ago. To me, that doesn't show uh, a manager that's, you know, thinking about what's best for the team. He's thinking about giving somebody a bit of game time. And ultimately, it's not going to cost us, so it's not going to matter. But if it had cost us, that's the, that's the risk that you run as a goalkeeper, uh, as a manager. You run that risk. Uh, I have got the timer working now, so let's, let's get that up on the screen for you. Sick of uh, there we go. Let's go in. Um, so yeah, let's move on. Let's not have a big go about Dean Henderson. If we win this game, 
De Gea's back in goal at the weekend. Bada bing, bada boom. Make sure you subscribe if you're new. Bottom right-hand corner to do that. Um, we're on the road to 700... 700? Why do I think 700? 925,000. So please subscribe if you're new. Bottom right-hand corner. Second half, we'll have the player ratings for you to vote for for the match reaction. Let's get the three points. Massive game against Leeds on Sunday. They're going to be a far bigger test. I tell you what, I think if you make the mistakes that we made in the first half against Leeds... It's going to be a harder game to come back. We're playing... A, look, Sheffield United, they're full of heart. They're full of effort. But we also know they've got one point. They're not a great team. We should be beating these even on a bad day. But what I wanted to see tonight was um, was a good performance um, to take into the Leeds game. And I think if we if we, if we we played like this against Leeds, we, we'd have a harder game, wouldn't we? Um, Question for you, if you could have one in this side, Keen or Vidic, who would it be? Also rude in his prime or Didier Dogbra also loved the video earlier, says Luke Hamilton. That's going for Goldbridge if you want to check that out. Like, I feel that Roy Keane is, is more important for Manchester United, but uh, I also think that you know Vidic would be important, but Rio would probably be the most important centre. I mean, I like Vidic more than Rio. You know, I spent most of my life watching that pair at Manchester United and I always preferred Vid Vidic. But what we need at United is probably Rio for his pace. Um, but I'd bring Roy Keane back. Tellez with the cross here. Headed over bar by Martial. Clean sheet would have been nice, Michael Jones. What's my prediction? 4-1 United. Yeah, I think mine United will... Uh... Nice. But yeah, I just, I just want us to get the three points now. Get the three points. That's what it's all about. Brownie Dog says that Keane personally would not work in this squad, mate. Roy Keane would work in any squad. He's the best captain the Premier League's ever had and he was a fantastic midfielder. He would work in this team. You stick him where Matic is and the game changes. And Matthew Gartel's right. It's better to make a mistake in this game than do it in a big game. Yeah, and, and you know, Dean Henderson will learn from that. And you're right. You know, making a mistake in a game like this is far more important than than doing it in a game that actually uh, that matters. Rashford's had a good game tonight, though. Good little run here from Rashford. He needs to get that to Greenwood, and he does. Greenwood blocked shot. Good run by Rashford though, direct, and he got the pass off to Greenwood. Wasn't selfish, which sometimes I think Greenwood and Rashford can be a bit selfish, but good movement of the ball. Uh, Shinjic says a lovely run by Rashford. He looks on it tonight, Rashford, doesn't he? Looks really good. Lovely run by Rashford. They're just showing it back there. Yeah, Greenwood does do the same thing a lot of the time. It's always getting on his left foot because that's his, that's his strong side, isn't it? I'm a little bit nervous this second half. I just have this feeling that, you know, if we don't take the chance, we'll... Uh... We could get back into it. Uh, who do you reckon Ollie will bring on? Um... Gertrude says, who do you think he'll bring on? I think it's probably a good bet that we will um, we will bring on McTominay and Fred. I'd love to I'd love to be telling you that we'll bring Van der Beek on, but I don't think we will. Lovely team goal, lovely teamwork there. Rashford into Bruno, into Martial, into Rashford. Oh, it's delightful. It's delightful. I'm, I'm clapping like a seal. What a goal by Man United that is. Greenwood gets fouled. 
Pogba and Lindelof are having a little bit of a smile and a chat, but it's Bruno, Martial and Rashford. That is fire. That is absolutely fire. The finish by Rashford, look, maybe the keeper should do better, but it's the quick movement from United. It starts off in our own half. Watch this back. Pogba. Lovely bit of play by Pogba. Into Bruno. Little flick into Greenwood. Greenwood gets fouled, but Martial, Rashford to Bruno, to Martial, to Rashford. Keeper, keeper makes a right mistake. The keeper makes a right cock up here. It's a good goal. Keeper should have bloody saved it. The build-up play is fantastic. Absolutely brilliant. Pogba, Bruno, Rashford, Martial. What a team goal. 3-1. Get in. Exactly what we needed. We needed that goal. And I tell you what. Did say it, didn't I? I think the only problem with this team is Mason Greenwood. That right-hand side. It's almost... It's, it's been a little bit of like a flashback, hasn't it? We've gone back to this team that got us, te got us top third place. Remember after lockdown against Spurs? And we came back from against Spurs until the season ended. And he pretty much went with Matic, Pogba, Bruno, Rashford, Greenwood, Martial for about 11 games. And we, we went from... Was it sixth to third? Um, and it's like, it's like an old friend tonight. Kay Chino says, I love this club. It's like an old friend tonight. We've gone back to that team. I, and I, you know, I, I would really say to Solskjaer, why have you been pissing about so long this season? Why have you been going with McTominay and Fred and Mata and Dan James when this team got you third place? This was the team you needed to adapt to try and get into a title race. I really hope... He can stick with this team. And look, we've got people like Cavani that can help out. We've got people like Van der Beek who maybe could come in where Greenwood is or Greenwood will get better, whatever. But this team was the blueprint that got us into the Champions League. And tonight, it's the team that's got us out of trouble. And tonight, it's the team that's played really good football. Pogba to Bruno to Rashford to Bruno to Martial to Rashford. And, and the inter inter intricacy between that, fantastic Pogba from deep. The little flick from Bruno, the pass, the Martial pass. Fantastic. I mean, keeper should save it, but the build-up play is absolutely fantastic. And um, who do you think is better, Maguire or Lindelof? Lindelof. But you've got to play Paul Pogba where Paul Pogba is playing. Like, so how, how are you going to get Pogba in the team? Like Pogba's got to play with either Bru either Matic or Fred or McTominay. Not McFred. You've got to play Pogba. Loving how we're looking, very positive, but Pogba's given the ball away five times in our own half. He just makes me a bit nervous, says Daniel Luciano. Uh, I just wanted people to see the difference in class between Matic and McTominay. He actually knows how to play that role. He's vital in the team, says Sean Negative Turner. Mark, keep, sell or loan, Rashford, Martial and Greenwood. I'm not getting rid of any of them. No way, Land. Rashford's on fire tonight. Mark, did you see Rooney's son Kai has signed for United? Says Habib. Nope. I think I think Bruno's played really well tonight as well. You know, he had two touches in that. You know, Pogba started it off, but then Bruno had two touches involved in that. Martial, an assist and a goal tonight. Rashford's on fire with two goals. Um, I'm very happy. I'm very happy. Not happy with the defence. I think the defence are a, a bloody nightmare. We know that. We've known that for weeks. But what you want to see is United scoring good goals. And the goals are good. Such a shame Pogba doesn't want to be here. When he's on this form, he's unplayable, says Jake Pennington. Well, you know, could he sign a new contract if we win the league? I don't know. Mark, if we score one more, I think we can go above Everton. Keep doing what you're doing, brother. Love the United stand. My two-year anniversary is coming up. Happy anniversary, Bryce Jones. Is Rashford down the left-hand side? Tell us and Ambersacker have got more tonight. Nice to see, says Emily Derry. And how how many times has Pogba lost the ball in our penalty half? Also, Greenwood should take fainting classes from Rashford, says John Hilmer. I mean, the, the Pogba thing, to me, I think Pogba's had a really good game. Um, a lot of people saying that Pogba's giving the ball away. Yeah, he does. He does. But is that not the same as um is that not the same as Bruno with a misplaced pass? I suppose it's a bit dangerous where he gives the ball away, but uh That is just very frustrating, says Glenora. 
It's not match ratings time yet for about another 15 minutes, pal. They won't be out yet. Please subscribe if you're new. Bottom right-hand corner. What's my pr predictions for Leeds? He'll go and play McFred again. He'll drop Matic and Pogba, or he'll play Pogba off the left. And, uh... I mean, my ideal midfield three is the midfield three that we played against Sevilla. Fred, Pogba, Bruno. That was that worked. And it, we, you know, the mid. You know, you look back at that Sevilla game. We we outplayed Sevilla for a large proportion of that game, and um, we lost it because the strikers didn't take their chances and the defense was shit. The midfield three was good. Sean Negative Turner. Let's not get too excited. These have one point in the league. I still don't want a Pogba in this side. I'd rather Donny all day. Pogba playing for a move, says Sean Negative Turner. But that might benefit us. You know, that might benefit us. Lovely little flick by Bruno is there. I mean, the goal was lovely. The keeper should have saved it. The goal was lovely, though. Um, fair play to the ref for playing on. Calm, it's only Sheffield United, says Jeff Abrahams. I am calm. I said we were going to win. Thanks for the contribution, Josh Poole. Subs, Ollie, says Shahan. Uh, still a little bit early. We're only 56 minutes in. Happy birthday, Kate, says Profiton. My team's got 65 points. 23 from Hugo Jask, says Matt Tolers, Tosland. Um... I think we, I, I, Reese, I said about Pogba, the situation is I don't like what happened. I think United have been weak in the way that they've dealt with it. I think it makes Pogba and his agent look bigger than the club. But ultimately, if he's playing well in a United shirt, we benefit as well. Let's open the floodgates, LD says. Evan, evening ruined back to watching YouTube goals by the Invincibles, says Zane Miassi. And uh, you can see the advantage of Tellez in an attacking team, says Salah Ahmed. We needed to play Tellez tonight. We did. We really did. Uh, Mengi was promised game time. Where's his? Says Mexo. Where's Twan Sebi's? Goal and assist for Martial, though. I mean, I'd take that. Rashford's outshone him. I mean, for me, Rashford's going to be man of the match at the moment. But I think Pogba's played well. I think Bruno's played really well. He hasn't got his goal or his assist, has he, Bruno? Lindelof, Pogba, Martial. Rashford, Rashford, Martial. It's amazing. We've scored three goals and Bruno's not got a goal or an assist yet. There is Bruno, though. This might be something. 4v3. Oh, he gets the pass wrong. Should have gone to Greenwood there, Bruno. There's goals here. There's goals here, and I think that's why he doesn't want to make any changes. There's more goals in this game. It does, you know what, it does create an issue for Sunday, though. I mean, that, that by Matic is a good ball into Bruno, and then he's flicked it out to Greenwood. What a ball, and it goes out for a throw-in. What a ball that is by Bruno there, the little flick. It looks like a bad ball, and then Greenwood actually gets there. Some lo lovely, what a pass by Bruno that was. Mark, I know the opposition is poor, but why don't we play like this every week, says Kay Chino. Because we don't, though, do we? This is what I was about to say, that. The contrast between tonight is not the abyss is not the um it's not the it's not necessarily the opposition of course man city are better than sheffield united but man city drew with west brom and sheffield united might beat west brom so you know these the, the contrast tonight for united is where the cdms are look at where matic and pogba are we're playing so much higher up the pitch the lovely ball by lindelof into the corner again for martial to chase he holds it up he wins the throw-in. Um, but it's the way we want to play today. You've got Tellez bombing forward. You've got Wambasaka getting forward. You've got Pogba going forward. You've got Matic. 
um, playing a bit further forward as well. That's the difference tonight. K Keichino's right. Why don't we play this more often? It's a 4-2-3-1. It was a 4-2-3-1 the other day. But um, it's the way that you play it. Oli can't fool people and say, well, I, I picked the fame, same formation because you don't pick the same way of playing. What happened to Twan Sebi since his great game against PSG? Is he injured? Says Mike. No, I just didn't pick him. I don't care if Pogba wins the league. He shouldn't be in the squad. No one is bigger than the club, says Jay Moss. And good to give Henderson some game time. It's not bad tactics and uh, in a sure win game, says Patrick Farland. Well, Patrick, it's, it's always all right to say that now, isn't it? But at 1-0 down, if we put in a bad performance, we lose the game 1-0. Um, you know, I always thought that it was a, a much win game, but... Bruno and Pogba, brilliant this half, says Steve Ivey. Well, who was the Pratt who said that Pogba and Bruno can't play together? Was it Carragher and Neville? I mean, despite the fact that they were intrinsic in as getting third place um, and they played together loads of times, they, they can't play the same position in the same team, but they can definitely play with Pogba in this role, which is where he plays for France. I, I, I love the, the Pogba FC bullshit. Um, I mean, there's, there's members of Pogba FC who know what they're on about, but there's members of Pogba FC who just don't know what they're on about. And um, it's... Um, it's um it's um he's not a he's not an attacking midfielder love the channel mark might be a good opportunity to rest brumo maybe stick van der beek on says daniel backle uh 62 minutes i would i would be looking to make some changes now Matic has been providing some great balls between the lines. Certainly our best DM. Uh, if only we can get a better replacement, says KA. They nearly scored from a corner there. Thanks. You all right? What's wrong? Dan James o'clock, says Akib. Could bring Dan James on. Another corner for Sheffield United here. They've overhit that one. Van Bissaka clears it. I suppose he won't want to make any subs tonight anyway, Ollie, because he's got um, a game on Sunday, isn't it? So he's probably not going to play Matic, is he? he won't, Ma There's no way Matic is going to start. No way Matic will start at the weekend. So it's, it's just whether he's going to start Pogba or not. Free Donny is in the live comments. Mark, how about Thomas Partey as the new CDM once Arsenal get relegated, says Brad Lewis. He will be looking for a new club if they get relegated. I mean, Arsenal aren't going to get relegated, let's be honest. Um, I don't think Sheffield United are going to get 10 points at this point. So um, Sheffield United, Arsenal have already got more points than that. It's nice to be comfortable in a game, though. It's nice to be comfortable. And um, I think, you know, if I... I can sort of see what Ollie's doing, keeping the players on, getting them, you know, a bit of rhythm. He has got to think about Sunday, though, Rashford especially. Um, but he's on a hat trick, isn't he? But then is Ollie doing again what he did with Henderson? You know, is he playing on loyalty or is he playing with sensibility? And I think that I'd be looking to take Rashford off, give him 25 minutes off. I know he's on a hat trick, but we've got Leeds at the weekend and you want him to come into that Leeds game hungry. Good play by Greenwood here. 
Greenwood's just not not quite at it this season, but I, I do, you know, he's a talent, isn't he? You, you want him to just keep uh, working at it and finding his form. What I've liked about tonight is that, you know, Bruno hasn't scored or got an assist. So, thanks, Thogden. Apart from Henderson, is this our best 11? Says Jowin Daniel. No, I think Luke Shaw's got to play. Luke Shaw is massively important for us. I don't know where you get Luke Shaw in. Do you play him at left centre back? I don't know. But you've got to get Luke Shaw into the team. He's, he's our best defender. Imagine if the coaches at Crystal Palace would have not converted Aaron Wambasaka into a right back. He would have been the worst right winger in the world, says Bellew. Uh, welcome to the Members Club, Chris Weller. Thanks very much for joining. Free Donny, says Thogden. There was a brief time we looked to Dan James to get us the win. Anyone who says we haven't made progress under Ollie is obviously just hating, says Ash G. Here's Greenwood on the left-hand side. Again, see, this is the problem with Mason Greenwood on the wing. He's, on a, he's at a ridiculous angle and he shoots. He's got to cross. And this is why he's not a winger. He's a striker because in that position, you don't want Greenwood to lose his selfishness because he's a striker. But on the right wing, it, it's a problem. He's got to put a cross in there and he's shooting. Bit, 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 uh, bit, 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 um, what's the word? A bit selfish there from Greenwood. If it goes in, we're all, we're all saying what a goal, but it was a bit selfish. <clears throat> 67 minutes. I would expect him to make a sub in the next five, really. I mean, Sheffield United just haven't offered anything in this second half, have they? Really annoying me to see Maguire being the spare centre-back and leaving Lindelof to go for headers. Why did we buy him? Harry the Hoover, says Luke Darling. And uh, to be honest, to be fair, Pogba has wanted to leave for a while. Board will have made it very difficult for him so he can understand his frustrations. Agents' comments were out of order, but Pogba's still producing for the shirt, says Nick M. And I think that's right as well. Um, you've got to... Uh, you, you've got to... Um, if he's performing in the shirt, there's not really in it. There's no real issue apart from disappointment. He's only 19. He's still learning, says Alec Martin. No, Ma no, Alec. It's not about. I'm going to call you up on that. Thanks for the super chat. I'm not having. He's only 19 for Mason Greenwood. He's still learning. I don't want him to learn. What I'm saying is, you don't want him to not be selfish because he's going to be a cracking striker. What I'm telling you is, he's not a right winger. Don't want him to learn how to be a right winger. Because if Mason Greenwood suddenly learns how to put crosses, he's, he's going to stop learning how to shoot. He's a striker. He's not a right winger. I think he's out of position, um, which is why you see the selfishness of him sometimes. Lovely ball by Pogba into Bruno. That's a foul. Should be getting. Should be getting a yellow card. Well done, Michael Oliver. I never normally clap you, but it is a yellow card. Donny's not part of the plan. Van der Beek says uh, Angus. Your TV is slower than mine as we are moving. It's nothing to do with the TV, mate. We're watching it on Amazon Prime in the UK, which is a streaming service. And unfortunately, that means it can be all over the place. Who would you drop for him then, says Alec Martin? Greenwood? I'd, I'd like to see Van der Beek playing off the right-hand side, to be honest with you. Bring the van, open the door, look at the deer and release the beak, says Andy So What GG. And uh, Ollie switches are good formation. Uh, when we lose bad, makes him lose confidence in it. I feel when we lost 6-1 to Spurs, he didn't play 4-2-3 for a while, says Vassaro.
Yeah, no, no subs. You can do your player ratings in a minute. I'll let you know when that's out. I've not had the message yet. Rashi's having a good game, says Shahan. Yeah, he definitely is. Ollie hates Donny, says Noah. I think I I actually think, and, and, and tonight's not the time, because Wan Matter's coming on. Um I actually think that he, he he's trying to prove a point here. Well, I've just tweeted it there. I mean, if you're going to bring Wan Mata on over Donny van der Beek, Donny van der Beek can do everything that Wan Mata can do. Like, if Wan, Wan Mata's not a right winger. Wan Mata is a... Wan, the best thing is, everybody... A lot of people think Donny van der Beek is a cam. Well, Wan Mata's a cam who sometimes, who's been forced to play on the right wing. So Donny van der Beek can play absolutely everywhere that Wan Mata can, and he can do it better. And yet he's going to bring Mata on instead of van der Beek, and van der Beek will not play against... Um, Leads. Uh, don't you think Van der Beek could work with Fred? Donny should be a star man for this team. He has so much potential. Thanks for the great work, Mark, says Carl's uh, to his DM. Top of form table plus Premier League people want Ollie out, says Robert McCormack. You know what, though? You know, could it be that Ollie Gunnar Solskjaer feels that he's made such a, you know, he's made such a big deal out of not picking Van der Beek that now he doesn't want to pick him because if Van der Beek proves to be this star player, everyone will say, "What a prat, Ollie! You didn't pick him from the start." I mean, that maybe that's a reason. I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't have the solution to it. I know he's a good player and I know he can play in numerous positions. Why would you not give him any game time? I don't know. I just I don't know. It's weird. But we're winning the game, so, you know, it's a, I think it's a topic that's bigger than beating Sheffield United, bigger than, you know, whatever we do. Um, feel like an idiot for asking for a Van der Beek jersey for Christmas. Poor guy, he's a baller and brings so much energy, says Michael Fetty. Could be stubbornness from Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, could be, yeah. Uh, Greenwood's coming off for Mata. So this would have been the perfect perfect sub to bring Van der Beek on. That's where I think Van der Beek should be playing. So when, when I change it on the screen here, uh, Greenwood's coming off. So where's, where's Mason Greenwood? Mason Greenwood comes off. Juan Mata comes on. And that's exactly where... Van der Beek should be playing as far as I'm concerned. At least Ricky's happy anyway. I'm telling you, Flex, it might have been 3-1 with uh, 15 minutes to go when they brought Mata on. But we don't win that game if it's not for Mata. Please subscribe. Bottom right-hand corner, we're very close to 925,000. Bottom right-hand corner to do that. 15 minutes to go. We haven't... Uh, I don't know whether we've got that yet. I will let you know. Just looking to see if we've got the player ratings yet. Don't think we have. Could it be that Van der Beek was, wasn't Ollie's transfer choice in the summer and he's showing a point to Woodward? Ollie doesn't want Van der Beek just thinking out loud here, says Yi wrong. Yeah, it could be. It'd be a bit weird. Is Ollie playing a game with the board with Donny van der Beek by play Pogbrich uh, shows the investment we need? Also, pairing of Lindelof and a CDM in January be steps as TJ Hogan. Dear Santa, for Christmas this year, I wish I, for a United top four finish and Arsenal relegation, says Duke of Knowledge. Uh, Mark. We have won this game down to the players. We have nothing to do with Ollie and his subs are poor. How is he bringing in 40-year-old Matter over Van der Beek? Says Football Facts. And why is Tellez never 
on set pieces and never attacking, says Matthew Murdoch. Matt are doing work already. Hey, there's nothing wrong. Hey, look, I'm, there's nothing wrong with Matt, Juan Mata. I'm, I'm not saying there is anything wrong with Juan Mata. He's a good player, but I think Ollie's trying to prove another point to the board. I asked for Grealish. He delivered Donny. Says Tim Z35. But then you you could look at that and say, well, if that's what his point is, you haven't got Grealish, you've got Van der Beek. You're telling me you're now not going to pick a player. Um, it's the shape, Fleck. Do you know what I mean? Says uh, Sean Finnerty. Uh, Nick P says, can we just acknowledge that outside of the boot spinning pass by Bruno, what a magician, says Nick P. I think Bruno's played really well today. I'd be interested to see what the player ratings say because I guarantee people will say, oh, we didn't have a good game. And I think he's scored goals and got assists in games, and yet, and, and he's played better than the way he's played tonight. Uh, sorry, he's played worse than he's played tonight. I think he's, I think he's played really well tonight, Bruno Fernandes. I think he's been uh, fo a focal point. Uh, player ratings are available now on theunitedstand.com. I'm just about to drop the link in the video description. Martial, into the box, crosses it. Oh, Mata should have scored then. It would have been another assist for uh, for Martial. Give credit to Pogba then. Oh my God, why are people still doing this? We're Manchester United. We're not Pogba United. We don't want to be Pogba United. We're Manchester United. Piss off with him when he leaves in the summer. What? I've already said that Pogba's played really well. I've tw checked my Twitter timeline. What does it say? I don't have to put Pogba in the sentence of every time I say that Bruno's had a good game. Stop being so bloody insecure about your your club. Pogba FC. I think Pogba's been very good tonight. Brilliant. And I think that we've got to play Pogba next to either Fred McTominay or Matic from now on. Because otherwise we're too defensive. The contrast is ridiculous um, compared to the the game against Man City and other games. I think we've seen the issue tonight, big time. Uh, Donny's coming on. Still coming on second to matter though, isn't he? Not good enough, Ollie. Not good enough. 12 minutes to go. Anthony White says we've played really well. Yeah, I think we've got the job done. I mean, if we don't... My, my, goal, my score prediction, remember, my score prediction was... Um, what was my score prediction? 3-0. It would have been 3-0 at this moment in time if we hadn't made the mistakes that we made at the start. So Van der Beek's coming on. For Bruno. He's, he's not, this is the thing. That This is my theory. I think he thinks Van der Beek can only play where Bruno plays. Absolutely mad. Just absolutely mad. But Bruno's had a good game. I think, I think that's what it is. I think Ollie thinks that he can only play as a number 10. So, yeah, what's, what's your thoughts been on the game? For me, I think it's. I think at times we've played really, really well. Um, I, th I think there's a disjoint between the back and the front. Um, we, we know that. We know this. Um, but on the other hand, it really is about getting the result tonight really getting getting the three points was what it was all about um and and look it's not over yet there's still 10 minutes to go what go on mark what do you think about bringing in frankie de jong as a pogba replacement to play alongside van der beek uh says v you've been watching my career mode 
Uh, Van der Beek theory is simple. Bruno was bought to replace Pogba and Van der Beek was bought as an understudy to Bruno whenever Bruno is available, says Baloo Singh. Uh, here comes Beaky, says Rory Superfine. I mean, Baloo, that, you, you might be spot on with that theory, but it's such a waste of a theory. He's so much He's so much more than one position, Van der Beek. He's, a, he's he, you know, he's a product of the Ajax youth, youth system, one of the best youth systems in the world, and they, you know, they can play. He can play multiple positions, and he can play it better than some people that we've actually got playing in our team. So, look, I don't know. Here he is on the right hand side. Bad first touch, actually. And of course, the problem with Van der Beek is that you know he has actually played well when we when we, when we've seen him play, but what happens if he suddenly starts playing badly because of a lack of confidence? Uh, if you want to do the player ratings, the link is in the video description. I think it should be anyway. Let me have a check. Yes, it is. It is. Uh where it says vote here mark every player out of 10 six being average put a star next to your man of the match and then submit your scores at the bottom so danny donny's sort of gone to right wing with matter at number 10 now couldn't make it up could you bruno job time done time to sit and drink my chalky milk says joshua bowwater Free kick here because Henry Maguire has given a handball. <clears throat> Be interested to see who you're going to put in your man of the match. Make sure you do player, uh, your player ratings. Player ratings. Make sure you do player ratings because um, we cover that in the match reaction straight after the game. We've still got about 10 minutes to go in this. Maguire's getting a bit of stick because he, uh, he gave away the free kick. Uh, I think Brewster's going to take this. I needed a bit of a stretch. Hit the, into the wall. Wall did its job that time. Wasn't going to go in anyway. Another cross. He's obviously keeping Rashford on for the hat trick, isn't he? That's an interesting uh, point there. Um, I do want to read that out. Uh, Jared says, Martial's made some re really good running lines. Man of the match for me. It's not always about the goals, is it? I know who everyone's going to give man of the match to, but I think Martial's played really well today. And all right, you know, he's got the goal, but his overall performance as the number nine has been crucial again. The runs he makes, the hold-up play, the passes. He, he could have had two assists tonight as well. So I think Martial's had a really good game as well. But whether people will understand that, I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see in the player ratings show. Mark, are you worried the board will decline to invest in the squad in January because of how Donny is treated? £40 million for a sixth-choice midfielder, says Uber Millen. I don't, I don't think so. We need a centre-back, don't we? Um, Mark, let's acknowledge how disagreeing or defying the board of any company ends for anyone. Also, still Ollie out as we are not winning anything soon, says Brad Lewis. There you go. Lindelof's been superb tonight as well. Not my words. Somebody in the live comments. Uh, Lindelof's my man of the match as Anon. I think Lindelof has been good tonight, actually, you know. Yeah, apparently we are seven points off better off than we were at this time last year, which which sounds amazing to me. But then again, we lost a lot of games last year. I know we think we've lost a lot of games this year, but we've, we've actually... Uh... Do I think Sheffield United will go down? Um, to be honest, they don't look terrible. They just look a bit naive at the back and they, they're, lacking, um, they're lacking something at the front. Kovacian says, I agree, Mark. Martial keeps the attack together. Lindelof immense. He is a centre-back that can pass. They're just not... You know what? Whatever you think, whether you like Maguire, whether you like Lindelof, it, as individuals, you can have that conversation. But as a pairing, they are not good. Dan James is coming on now. I personally think Maguire has been great today, says Banks. There you go. I don't know whether that's going to be a popular thing. Um, 
Aditya Batia says, uh, thanks for the super chat there. I wouldn't say Maguire's been great tonight. I mean, he's, he's the captain of the team. He's made a massive mistake at the start of the game that he shouldn't make. Um, I don't think he's really been tested, has he? He's always the spare man. Look at him there in the middle. Always the spare man. Always passing them off. Always looking. He thinks he's blue. He does think he is Harry Beckenbauer. Like, you're a physical specimen, Harry Maguire. You, you, you need to mark people. That's what you're there for. Great video today, Mark. Have a safe Christmas as T36. Thanks, pal. Going for Goldbridge if you want to know what it is. Tellez. Good good recovery tackle by Tellez there. Good to see Tellez doing well defensively as well. Because we know he's we know what he's got going forward, but we need to see him playing well defensively as well. Lovely battle. Yeah, you think about it, Luke Shaw. Has played. Luke Shaw was man of the match in the derby, and Telez has come in and played well. You got a real battle going on there. And they've scored. Sheffield United have scored here. Another corner, another goal, and there's four minutes to go, and the heads go into the hand because I'm like, oh my god, how have we conceded from another corner here? Bloody Maguire again! What is he doing? It's actually in his zone. And it's a lucky goal. Actually, it's a lucky goal. Lindelof does win the header. And it goes in off the back of the Sheffield United player. But it's... It's... What is the point in Harry Maguire at this point? I really don't understand. It's not Lindelof's fault. Lindelof actually attacks the ball and heads it. It's Maguire who's caught out. I just... Another corner. And another centre-back. Mistake. Oh, I mean, I'm tired. I'm tired of it. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to moan because we've just got to get the three points and get out of this. But 3-2 against Sheffield United. You should be boosting your goal difference here. I'm, I'm panicking now. I'm nervous now. £80 million we paid for Harry Maguire. He plays like he's bloody a sweeper. You're at £80 million, header of the ball. Zonal marking again. Zonal marking again as well. Just unbelievable. So the corner on that one, basically, it wasn't a front post corner that we conceded this time. It was a back post corner. Maguire doesn't jump well enough. Uh, Lindelof does jump, heads it, and heads it against the Sheffield United player. But it's... Um, it's no marking, that's what it is. Nobody attacks the ball in the right way. Maybe Henderson should come to collect it as well. That, that might be a good point as well. Ball, what happens with... The, man, zonal, mar, zonal marking can work, but you've got to own your zone. Like, I remember being taught this when I was younger. Like, own your zone. You mark out your zone in your hair, in your hair, in your head, and you attack anything that lands in your zone. Well, that's landing in Harry Maguire's zone because Lindelof doesn't really attack it. Or maybe it's landing in one of them. But they've got to go and get it. And maybe maybe Henderson could come and get it. But we're too static. Too static there. And maybe maybe there is a little bit about the goalkeeper as well. But we're at, they're going to start launching balls. I tell you what, if we drop points in this game, I'm not even bloody joking. This is a bloody joke. Get it out. Good header there by Pogba. Pogba attacking the ball. Please subscribe if you're new. Bottom right-hand corner. Well done, Martial there. Takes a foul for the team. Good one. It was a corner we conceded from. It was a bloody corner because Tellez put it out for a corner. It actually should have been a goal kick, by the way. The only thing Maguire should captain is the Pratt club. Sell him already, please, says Billy. Well, he's going to bring McTominay and for Martial now. We're going to park the bus. Oh, I'm, I know what you're saying. You're saying it shouldn't have been a corner. They, we did concede from a corner. It shouldn't have been a corner because it, it flicked off a Sheffield United player. How long is he going to add on? Mark, how many goals have we conceded from zonal marking, says Mario? You know, the worrying thing is about tonight, it's not 
we're not as a fan base, we're not coming together because the Ollie Outers are going to be saying jammy, lucky, individual brilliance from people like Pogba and Bruno and Rashford. Defensively, we belong in the bloody championship. You know, we beat Sheffield United 3 2, we've got one point. Imagine what a decent team's going to do us. Maguire might be the worst £85 million ever spent, says Rip Robert. Well, make sure you watch the match reaction because however this goes, I've got loads and loads of things to talk about about this game because whether we win or not, um, Rudy Cox says, Goldie to KG and Flex, they'll never score. Oh, Dean Henderson's made a good save there. Bloody hell. Shit, I thought that was in. Three minutes to go. We're hanging on here. We're hanging on. How good a save was this from Dean Henderson? Say hello to my wife, Hannah. She loves you, says Johnny Moss. Well, that's not the angle. I mean, it's not a world-class save. It's He's got both hands on it, but it's a, he bloody needed to make it. Good save, save by Henderson there. Can't wait for you guys to play as Leeds, says Jack Massey. Oh. Remember, you can do your player ratings through the link in the video description. Mark every player out of 10, six being average, and uh, put a star next to your man of the match and then submit your score. We'll be going over that in the match reaction show. Got loads to talk about in the match reaction show. Some things really good, some things that are an absolute joke. I think whatever happens here, we've got to get the three points, but oh my God, there's a dissection of this result that we need to discuss. This is Sheffield United. They've got one point. They've scored five goals all season, and in one game, they've nearly scored. Well, they've, they've nearly scored fifty percent of their goals. Well, well, obviously they've scored seven now, but it's not good enough, is it? You've got to take the negatives in a, in a game like this as much as you've got to take the positives. Aditya got his "Oh my door, you" T-shirt jumper. Thanks, pal. This win feels like a loss, says Dougie. It's no, it's a it's a good win, but God, are we there's still I think we're winning games and we're getting more questions out of the games than we're getting out. You know, we should be like, oh, you know, they, we're, God, I love Ollie, but wish he was better at learning from past mistakes, says Renate. Sheffield United on the attack, still got about a minute left in this one. Patrick Lamb says, I'll donate if you stretch. I'm sure, I don't know. I'm losing track of the time as whether I've stretched. Lindelof an eight today. Clearly our most consistent defender, says Mr. Glenn Johnson. What, you're gonna give a, you're going to give him an eight when he actually was at fault for the goal as well? Ollie's arguing with the... Uh, Manager now. I swear this team loves giving me high blood pressure, says Joshua Bowater. Ollie's arguing with the uh, thing. He's, he's been told to do that. You've got to win the fans, Ollie. Start arguing, arguing on the touchline. We should be all right now, though. We've got the ball. Tell you what, though, if we keep playing like this, it ain't going to be long before we get a battering. Pogba's now getting involved in something as well. Yellow card. I think Pogba's going to get a yellow card as well. Uh, also, Harry Maguire saying, judge me in five years, says Jack Massey. Please subscribe if you're new, by the way. We're nearly at 925,000. I'm just passing time, but you can pass time as well. Subscribe, bottom right-hand corner. It's free. Um, we're only 100, 200 away from 925,000. Sale Red says, I gave Lindelof an eight before the goal. <laughs> That's what happens if you do your player ratings early, mate. 
We, I think we've got this one. I think we have got it won. Come on, Maguire. Come on, Michael. Yes. <laughs> Big win. Big... <laughs> No, I'm not. What, what am I talking about? I'm happy about the result. Of course I am. But it's not a big win, is it? We've made a bit of a we've made a bit of an arse of that. Um, I've got loads to talk about. I think goods and bads. Lots to talk about. Um, links in the video description for the match reaction. I'll be live there in about 60 seconds time. Uh, probably well, tw two minutes, actually, let's be honest. Um, but that gives you time to do your player ratings. You can go to the unitedstand.com or the link is in the video description for that. Get your votes in. Mark every player out of 10. Six being the average. Put a star next to your man of the match. Submit your score and we'll go through that. A good win for Manchester United. We needed the three points, but bloody hell. There's a lot to talk about, isn't there? Title race. You're having a bloody laugh playing with that defence. Let's talk about it. Match reaction time. I'll see you in a minute.